Welcome to Back Issues. I'm Tiffany. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. And today we are going to be talking about Mr. Miracle. Yay! Here it is. It's Mr. Miracle. This is a book we've wanted to talk about for a while, and honestly, I just never felt like I was ready to do it. I've read this book three times, and I'll be honest, I still don't think I'm ready to talk about this oh. book, but we're going to do it anyway for no reason. <laughs> when On the this, back, uh... it says The Greatest Escape. So, like, you know, oh. that's something. Well, that's Mr. Miracle's whole shtick. Who is Mr. Miracle? What? I know nothing about Mr. Miracle. Who is Mr. Miracle? He showed up in a book we did the other day, and I was like, who is that guy? Really? Yeah. Oh, he's a new god. Oh. Okay, so... So, like, Dark I remember side? he likes... Yes. Big Barda. Yes. Yes, she's involved. I kind of like you guys figuring this out as we go along. Real quick, this is written by Tom King with art by Mitch Jarrods. Okay. So, we got a Tom King story. Do cool. we know Mitch Jarrods? I'm not familiar with that I name. I don't think you really know him okay. from anything, um, but... He is an incredible comic book artist and innovator, mm. and uh, yeah, he really pushes the boundaries on certain things, and we'll see a lot of it in here. Um, but let's talk about Mr. Miracle. Who oh, the greatest escape. No prison can hold him, no trap can contain him. Exactly, because Mr. Miracle, his whole thing he's is- He's Houdini. Basically, except, you know, uh, he's not a human, and uh, Houdini was a real person. Mm. You're so, like, also, not that at all. Yeah, no, because Houdini just did tricks, and Mr. Miracle seemingly has- Actual uh, power. Kind of. Yeah. I mean, the, his whole thing is he can escape anything. That's his power? Yeah. It's a very important power. Okay. Especially so, if you're dating. So listen, it's when you say it like that, you make it seem like it's really lame, but it's not. <laughs> You'd be surprised how often it comes it, it, up. Well, especially for him, because um, Mr. Miracle is the son of High Father. Okay. The ruler of uh, the new gods. Yeah. Is uh, Mr. Miracle a robot? No. Because he's written by Tom King, so I'm just wondering. No, actually. Not this, on the... This, this Mr. Miracle physically, has a lot of emotion. Oh, okay. So, yeah. So, just, no. And I know his mask kind of gives him that, like, yeah. vision, robotic look. No, he, there's a man under there. Okay. The new gods, Mr. Miracle, High Father, Dark Side, are created by Jack Kirby. Yeah. Back in the 70s. Okay. Right? He leaves Marvel after a falling out because of the fact that like he didn't get the creative control he was looking for. Um, he had a, a fear of losing control of things that he created. Mm. Um, he had recently been involved with a lawsuit with Marvel. His uh, former partner, Joe Simon, over Captain America and the rights to that because okay. they created him technically. Hmm. Um, creation, yeah, and yeah. he gave up all the rights to Marvel. And so then like, at one point, Marvel comes back at him with this contract, which is like he would not be able to take any legal ramifications at them. Right. And so he's like, I'm out. He's also, insulted the, he's insulted. Yeah. He had been working a lot with Stan Lee, obviously. And what he didn't like was that Stan was becoming more of a public figure and like the face of Marvel Comics. Mm. And I'm guessing it wasn't backing him up on the... Well, yeah, certainly home. not. I mean, like, Stan is a lot of bravado. He goes out there, he sells something, and you do need that. Whereas Kirby was the innovator. Kirby was the guy who was pushing, like, comic book art at the time. Kirby was the one that Marvel wanted all of their, like, artists on staff to draw like. Kirby kind of wanted that attention, but also didn't want that attention, seemingly. Mm -hmm. I understand wanting, like, it. the accolades, but not wanting to be in the spotlight. Yeah. And so, he leaves. And he goes to DC. And when he gets to DC, he creates the fourth world. He creates the new gods, which honestly, like if you had asked him at the time, he wouldn't have admitted to it. But it's very clear that he took it from a story he was going to tell at Marvel about the end of Thor and Asgard. Ragnarok comes and destroys mm. them all and leaves these two worlds. Like, we ain't doing it. We're not doing that. And he's like, all right, fine, I'm just gonna leave. And he goes to DC and he's like, I have this pitch. And they're like, well, just do it. Fine, whatever. You just go over there. He makes these fourth world books. The new gods are these godlike beings who live on these two planets. And High Father rules New Genesis and um, Dark Side rules Apocalypse, yeah. right? And they're always warring. They're always at a state of war. And in a way to find peace, the two decide that they will trade their sons. Yeah, right. Orion, Orion and, and somebody. And uh -huh. So Orion is, in, and Mr. Miracle. Oh, he's the, okay. And so- I must have known that. And yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So um, Apocalypse gives his second son, Orion, to High Father. High Father gives Mr. Miracle, he doesn't have this name at the time. In fact, he has no name, seemingly, oh. to um, Apocalypse. High Father, low son. Yeah, what? <laughs> High Father, no son. <laughs> No, he still has a son. Yeah. It's just his adopted son, Orion. Exactly. So, like, 
Orion is raised with love and warmth on New Genesis, and Mr. No Miracle name. is yeah, No Name is sent to the orphanage where Granny Goodness raises him in the X Pits, mm. which is like not the place anybody wants to be. Right, but her name is Especially Granny Goodness. Child. <laughs> you know that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> you know, don't judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a person by their name. It's just, no. She's abusive. She's got to toughen them up. Yeah, well, like. Apocalypse is rough. Yeah. Oh, she's like a boxer trainer. Like, uh, you know, in Rocky. Yeah, and like if you multiply that like by a thousand. Mm. I mean, like the things that she does to these children who are there. We do, like, they talk about it a lot in this book. Do Um, do a lot of these kids not survive? Yeah, most of them don't. Mm. Seems like a bad trade for High Father. Right? Yeah. Well. Yeah, but well, like... Well, he gets peace. Right. So that might yeah, save, like, peace. millions of lives, so, so like, maybe that is worth yeah, it. Yeah, they're cool with it. I mean, they still end up warring anyway. <laughs> oh. Inevitably. Well, then it's not worth it. But, yeah. Um, but I What mean, the hell was our son deal? Come on! <laughs> yeah. What's going on? <laughs> what was it's a cautionary that? tale. Don't do that. Yeah, it's that stupid. That's a stupid plan. It's, that won't it's work. It's a bad plan. Right. So, um, Mr. Miracle ends up getting the name Scott Free. Okay. Because um, he always gets off Scott Free? No, because, like, he often tries to escape. From the X Pits, tries from, to escape. Yeah, he never quite gets out. Inevitably, so he, he does. So he never gets scot free. Right, but Granny Goodness mockingly calls him oh, that. Oh, I see. And like during one of his escapes, Big Barda like sees him for the first time, and like inevitably the two of them like fall in love, and like they end up being married. And Big Barda, she's just like a what, like a resident of? She's from Apocalypse. Apocalypse. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, she was raised by Granny Goodness as well in the uh, orphanage. Okay. She was meant to be part of the female Furies. Ah, so they went through, like, you know, trauma. Not together, but no, similar trauma. No, sep- yeah, but separately from one another. Technically, she's also a new god, though. Ah, okay. Because the okay. new gods are, like, it's Apocalypse and New Genesis yeah, have new gods. the people on those planets are Exactly, new gods. exactly. So... But the minions of Apocalypse aren't new gods. No. The like parademons The aren't. parademons aren't, and honestly, on New Genesis, they also have a race of beings that aren't new gods okay. as well. Para-angels? No. No. <laughs> just, just people. They're, like, they're bug people, but they're oh, not. They call but them But not bugs. parademons. Not parademons. Oh, that's good. If you don't know anything about the new gods, you can totally read this. Oh, okay. cool. That's perfect for us. <laughs> um, yes. Because, like, honestly, everything I covered except the Kirby stuff um, is is told to you right at the beginning. Okay. Like, they kind of, they give you this rundown because, like, King really makes us approachable. Yeah. Like, he's just like, hi, you probably don't know a whole lot about the New Gods. Right, unless you've been reading DC for, like, 30 years. Right, and you yeah. were into this. Right. You prob- yeah, because you could read DC for 30 years and not have cared about it. Right, like, exactly. Like, stuff. Yeah. Exactly. But what's the Flash doing is my question. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I mean, more than likely, if you ha- are a fan of um, DC and you've read through many of the crises, you know about Mr. Miracle and, and Big Bardock. And this is going to be like, with Vision, a character study. Okay. Of Mr. Miracle. going to do a deep okay. dive on Mr. Miracle. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Wait, Tom King did the Vision run. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Probably why she compared it to. Can I get off the couch now? (laughs) No, why? I don't don't need to feel sad. You won't. This is this. All right. I don't think you're gonna feel sad about this. I think you're gonna be left with like the lingering questions that this book is going to bring up. Okay. Because honestly, I've read this book three different times, and I've come away thinking something different about it each time. Hmm. And I could read it again, and I bet I'd feel completely different about it at the end of it. So it's an evolving book. It is. I, I actually, this is, I love this book. I, I'm just going to, like, I'm not even going to hide it from you guys. <laughs> I love this book, and I think it's the best thing Tom King's ever written. Wow. To date. Right. He's working on an Adam Strange book right now, but it doesn't matter. When was this, like, what, like three years ago? This is 2017, 2018. Okay. So this is relatively About new. two years ago. Yeah. Right. So this book opens up, gives you the rundown of, like, hey, who, who the hell is Mr. Miracle, right? And this is cool, whatever, is escape artist neat. And it's, like, framed in this, like, telling of, like, almost like a TV show. And, like, it starts off with, like, Funky Flashman presents, like, the secret origin of Mr. Miracle. Ah! Yeah! Yeah, whatever. What are we, Muppets? Yeah. Ah! And we get the whole thing I just told you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cool. Right? And then the, the changing of suns, granny goodness, there she is. Just so you know, whenever I read Granny Goodness, I hear Ed Asner because Granny Goodness was played by Ed Asner in the Superman animated uh, uh. series. And uh, <laughs> yeah, yes. exactly. Here um, we go. The thing I didn't tell you was that um, when Scott Free 
gets away from Apocalypse, he comes to Earth, and he just kind of wanders, and he ends up meeting Mr. Miracle, who is Wait, a- Wait, what? Yeah, there was, there was a guy named Mr. Miracle. Thaddeus is a, a, a magician, he's an illusionist, he does, he escapes from things, right? right. And inevitably, he and his partner Oberon, his little guy, um, go around, they take Scott in, they like show him the ropes of the whole thing, and he ends up- Yeah, he's gonna be their protege. Yeah, he is. And like, he ends up getting like gunned down by like some thugs sometimes. What? It's a whole wow. thing. It's a whole thing. We're not, we're not, but he's a new god. No, so like, not Thaddeus. No, not him. The, the... Thaddeus is just oh, a Oh, Thaddeus dude. gets gunned Thaddeus, down. Like, I'm sorry, I thought Scott Free got gunned <laughs> right, down. Right, right. Which is weird because like Mr. Miracle's costume really kind of fits in with the new gods to some degree because it's wild and out there, but it has nothing to do with it. <laughs> it's right. It's just this guy's it's like, ta-da! Guy's what are you wearing? I got it on Earth. Yeah, whatever, man. It's oddly just, fitting. Yeah, so... so yeah. So the he's an escape artist, but it's like magical or something. There's but he goes so, yeah. and hangs out with a guy who does yeah. Like, and he's Houdini like, oh, that's cool. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. Oh, you do these parlor tricks. Yeah, Neat. and it, I guess to him it's also like, you know, like he's escaping because it's fun, not because he's like being tortured every day right. and like every day for the rest of his Escape life. Escape for right. fun. <laughs> yeah. What in the hell kind of fun is that? Barda and Oberon and Mr. Miracle, like, you know, have shows and have adventures and all that crap, right? And isn't that neat, right? Okay. It's punctuated by the, the sentence Dark Side is. Okay. Hmm. We're going to see that a lot. So mm -mm. just be prepared for that. Okay. This book picks up, we know all this happens. This book starts with Mr. Miracle has slit his own wrist and he's bleeding out in the bathroom. Oh. He's taken to the hospital where he begins, like, obviously his recovery. He doesn't die. Okay. And is his physiology like human? So they can, they just what? It's so close enough. Like they would anybody? Yeah, it's okay. close enough. Tiffany, like, I thought he was the great escapist. How come he can't escape life? Well, I mean, that's what he was trying to do. He was trying. To, well, <laughs> all right. So we'll, we'll, yeah, we're just going to keep going and you just keep that in the back <laughs> sorry. of your head. No, that's not a sorry. Trust me. By the end of this, you, you won't know your head from your ass. I guarantee you. <laughs> okay. Are we going to go back? Let's go back. Let's go. No, we don't. We don't? We oh, don't. Wow. That was my theory for a while. Yeah. I had a theory about the way this book worked. I was totally incorrect. Mm, okay. It's fine. Um, so anyway, we also are treated to the splash page and enjoy this splash page because the rest of this book is nine panel grid. Oh, wow. Okay. With the occasional this. Yeah. But it's almost all this. Okay. And it's intentional. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we see this little boy and we get this story, which will be repeated throughout the book, which is, about a teacher who's in a classroom who's just like, draw whatever you guys want. Let's see what you got. And a bunch of people are like, you know, I drew like superheroes and dinosaurs and hearts and all this stuff. And one boy and one child goes, I drew God. Oh. And the teacher's like, oh, that's cool. But like, no one knows what God looks like. And the kid responds, yeah, until now. <laughs> now you're he's right there. I just drew him. Yeah. Bam. And you're like. Post it on your uh, fridge. Okay, cool. Whatever. What's it look like? Oh, we, do we, we don't get, see it. Oh, we don't, we don't see it. Okay. So, um. We go to Mr. Miracle being like leaving the hospital. Um, we see clearly either he or Barta cleaning up the bathroom. Mm. Um, we see the media is there. Um, we establish in one panel that superheroes are in this book, but we're not going to really see them. So, like, you know, they've been getting messages from the Justice League. Clark was like hanging outside like their window. You mm. know what I mean? Like, just they're there, right? Yeah. Um, and for the longest time, we're going to see that, like, Scott has, like, two large cast-looking bandages on his arms, right? Mm -hmm. So they're home, they're hanging out, right? And then, like, a boom tube opens in their house. And it's Orion, and he's just like, stand. So he goes, and, and Scott responds, standing. And then Orion just beats the hell out of him. And every time he falls, he tells him to stand. And, Orion, and then Mr. Miracle says, standing, and he beats him back down. Until Barta wakes up and is like, the hell you doing? Because let's not forget something about these two individual characters. Like, Kirby designed these characters in a very specific way, where Scott is this smaller, diminutive person who really relies on his quickness and ability to escape things. Mm -hmm. Barda is this very tall, strong woman who has strength akin to that of Wonder Woman, but was trained in the X pits, and so her combatant level could probably stand against her as well. Okay. She okay. is she's just a force. Yeah. Right? And so it's very much the opposite of how like gender norms are typically yeah. portrayed. Right. Right? And so by the way. So is Orion a bad guy? Well he's I mean, like he's an antagonist. He's an antagonist in this Orion's story. Orion's always been a little twitchy. I okay. mean like he's, he's, he's still also, Dark Side's kid. And he's also kind of an right. ass. You can't escape your destiny. Right. Like you were born to a bad person. Yeah. So it doesn't matter who raises kind you, you're of, a bad but person. I kinda get the feeling that probably High Father also 
while he raised him, probably was just like, yeah, but, like, you're still Darkseid's kid. Yeah, kind of, but, like, he, he was seemingly raised with love, but, like, he's also, he's like, I'm a god. Mm. And I'm, like, the son of High Father, so, like, psh, right. I'm awesome. Fine, Mr. 40 freaking toity. <laughs> yeah, like, literally, he's just, like, a dick. Okay. Um, the fun- child of privilege. He kind of, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Barda, by the way, her personality, when Kirby created her, he created her look like this uh, woman who had recently been in, like, Playboy, okay. um, who was, like, an actress, but her personality is that of his wife. And, like, they're, like, hmm. Scott and Barda's relationship and the way they talk to each other and, like, they're, like, witty, like, you know, s- like, little, like, snarks at one another are based on his relationship with his wife. Oh, Who he okay. was married with until he died. Right. So, like, okay. yeah. That's nice. Barda's like, you know, what are you doing? He's like, I'm teaching. She's like, you don't teach. Like, that's not what you do. Like, right. the only person who teaches is Granny. Get the hell out of here. Like, you you don't know shit about what we have learned. Mm. You weren't in those expats. We were in those expats. Right? And so then, like, Orion leaves. You get a dark side is. Like, Scott and Barda are talking. She's like, he's just, a, he's an asshole. Don't worry about it. Right? And he looks up and he goes, he's like, what's wrong with your eyes? He's like, they were... Like, they were blue, not brown. And she's like, what are you talking about? They're always brown. Uh-oh. And you're like, say what now? <laughs> were they always brown? I'm guessing no. <laughs> so then we cut to seemingly a, a t- television performance of Mr. Miracle. He's in, like, a tube. He's doing, like, a, like an escape, right? Mm-hmm. Where it's just like, oh, no, the water becomes all, like, cloudy. And then, ta-da, he's fine, right? Cool, yeah. whatever. And he goes and he has this interview, um with the late night talk show host. And we see that like there are these like glitchy kind of like panels that happen and they're talking about what happened to him and kind of it's like seemingly like a PR stunt. How are we going to spin this so that Mr. Miracle didn't try to commit suicide? Uh. And so he's like, oh, the story is that like, oh, you see, like, you know, I've escaped everything. But like the question was, could I escape death? And like, so I gave it a shot. I killed myself. Ha 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 ha. And I escaped death. Okay. Okay. That's a good PR story to play after this. (laughs) Right. And so like, so as he's telling this, though, you'll notice that, like, in these two last panels, it's just weird sounds that he's making. Uh, yikes. D- did you actually escape? That's the question that the, the you know, interviewer has. Like, did you actually escape death, Mr. Miracle? And he's like, what? <laughs> or are you dead And right he's like, now? oh, hey, by the way, Ryan, we're going to go to commercial. We'll oh. see you later. Hmm. So then we cut to the beach. And, <laughs> and High Father is walking. I don't like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> and High Father's walking along with Scott. And, like, he's like, hey, yeah, I meant to come by sooner. Um, I heard your brother came by. And, like, I wanted to be here because of what happened to you. Mm. But, like, you know, we got, like, the war, like dark side. I'm right. technically not supposed to see you. It's just, it's just a lot is happening right now. And, and dark side has the equation. Oh. He has the anti-life equation. So, and, like, Scott's like, oh, okay, cool. And he's just like, so he'll be able to change reality with it. So, like, I really want to stay and, like, make sure you're okay, Scott, but I got to go. And, uh, this war's gonna go real bad. It's not gonna go well. I don't even know why I traded you. <laughs> it's a big mistake. Big mistakey. So then we cut to um, Oberon, who was the previous Mr. Miracle's right hand man, is Mr. Miracle's current right hand man. Yeah. And like he's and like he knows that like Scott Free is a new god and is like magic, yeah, oh, right? Yeah, no, he's he's well aware of all this crap. I mean, okay. most people are. Like they're not right. hiding that. Right. Okay. They're like, yeah, no, we're we're. Right, he's gods. a superhero. Yeah who, yeah, who cares, right? Yeah. And you got some guy from a blown up planet. You got new gods. Who cares? <laughs> so then, like, you know, he's showing him these new cuffs he got. He's like, they're Thanagarian. I got them off of a guy. Supposedly, you can't break out of them. Whatever. He puts them on there. As Scott's trying to get out of them, he tells them the story of the teacher who had the kids in class. Who oh. asked them to draw certain yeah, things. okay. So there's, like, a knock on the door, and, like, Scott's, like, oh, must be Barda. You know, she gets worried, and he's, like, yeah, yeah, I could see that. Like, but, like, you should probably go get it before she gets mad. I'll, I'll work on these. And then Barda comes in. She's, like, hey, I, I don't mean to, like, be encroaching on your space. I just don't like you being alone. And he's just, like, yeah, but Oberon's here. And she's, like, honey, seriously? Oberon died, like, <laughs> you know, of cancer, of throat cancer. Oh, jeez. And they're, like, she's, like, like a month ago. Uh-oh. So... Oh, my God. We're getting a lot of dark side is. <laughs> <laughs> and, like, he, he's, like, he, he he won't accept it. Right. And, like, he's, like... He's, like, seeing him or he's, like, reliving yeah. moments they had or something. Right? Hmm. Um, so, like, you know, he's, like, no, he was here. He was in the room. I was, I was talking with him. Scott gets up in the middle of the night. He gets some milk. He's hanging out there. His mother box rings. Honey, what are you it doing hangs. drinking the gravy? What? No, this was milk. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh god! Oh god! <laughs> Why do we have a, a jar of gravy this big? Um, he gets his mother box pings, and um, it's Orion, and he's just like, "High Father's dead." Oh. I'm in charge. I'm High Father. No. Oh. And I need you to come to war. You and Barda, you've mm. been drafted. <laughs> Stand. Yeah, and like so. They, you know, get themselves ready to go. Like, you know, Bart they just like, okay, I guess we'll go do it's that. It's like the next day. Like, there, there is a shift in time here throughout this entire book. You, you kind of assume it must be the next day. Like, all right, right we got to go. Okay. What I like about this book is that, like, all this crazy crap's going on. You got High Father. They're going to go fight against Apocalypse and Dark Side and all their forces. But Bart is like, hey, I got a message from Michelle. Don't worry, she'll take care of the cats. Like, there's also <laughs> this element of, like, real-world relationship between these two individuals, right, right? Right, right. And so, like, Mr. Miracle, as they're waiting for their boom tube to open and they're going to go through, is like, something's wrong with me. Something's wrong. Like... Yeah, you were talking to your dead friend a minute ago. Like, yeah, yeah. I know and, there's something wrong. Yeah, like, she, your eyes were blue and now they're brown. Like, everything is wrong. Yeah, and she's like, she's like, honey, like... I need you to snap out of this because we're about to go to war. Yeah. Like, war? Are we, though? It's <laughs> <laughs> the thing. I'm not so sure. Yeah, and it's like, he doesn't want to go through the boom tube. She's like, the fact is we don't know how long they're going to stay open because of the battles that are going on. We have to go through now. Mm. And he's just like, I don't, he's like, there's things that are happening and I don't know how to escape them, which panics him. Mm. So she smacks him. He falls and she says, stand. Uh-oh. He says, standing, gets on. They hold hands and they go through. Interesting. Yeah. I love what Jared says with the nine panel grid. Like, I think it's really smart. Part of it is him using it because of the fact that, like, it makes you feel trapped. Mm -hmm. It's part of it is that he controls every thing, single thing that you're seeing. Part of it was that he says that he was like, no, this way you won't question how to read the book. These kinds of pages, though, sometimes I'm like, what are we reading across or reading up and down? Yeah. Always reading up and down. You're okay. never going across. And sometimes there are some cues as to, like, the way bodies are falling or, the, like, later on that you're like, oh, okay, we're definitely doing it this way. Right. But, yeah. Scott just keeps being sent places by Orion. Every time he goes someplace and wins, there's no break. The, like, Orion's just like, okay, cool, now take your, your men and go over here. Okay, now take your men and go over here. Oh, now take your men and go over here. And he's just like, for new Genesis, for new Genesis. Like, always just, just the same battles. thing. Constant battle. Yeah. Like, there's no reprieve. Just, just. Killing parademons left and right. Yep, exactly. And so Just then, like, in parademon blood. Yeah. So then they're back Gross. in like New Genesis, seemingly, and like Scott's in the shower, and he's just like, "How, how does this? How does this work? How does the shower work? Is it on?" <laughs> right. There's no knobs or anything. Right? Oh, I see your three seashells. Like, I don't, <laughs> he's like, he's like, is there water? How? What is this supposed what to kind do? Of shower is this? So then she, he asks Barda to use her mother box because his isn't nearby to to find out about the shower. <laughs> And that's like, the mother box of the shower. How is, is it on? Uh, and that's like, the kitchen. Yeah. Get get out of there. <laughs> You're cooking your balls. So she, the mother box is like, it's on. And he's like, am I clean? And I love that question wow. because it's such, it's like, it's a funny moment, but it's also like a, oh, like you're not talking about this. Yeah. You're talking about this. Yeah. And so eventually he does leave the shower <laughs> and he has no idea if he left it on for Barda. He's like, I don't know. But like he comes out and he is, he is cleaned off. Okay. Um, they have this really tender moment where, like, he, like, talks about how perfect she is and how beautiful she is because, like, I, their relationship is, like, complicated but also really great. Mm -hmm. Like, I really like their relationship. So, anyway, they go to see Hi Father. It's Orion. He calls him Orion. Mm -hmm. And, like, Orion's like, uh... <clears throat> no. It's uh, uh, Hi Father? Yeah. So, Light Ray is, like, his right-hand man. Light Ray is another new god. And Light Ray's like, oh yeah, no, you have to, you have to bow to him. Mm. And it's like, really, Orion, you're not High Father. No. Mr. Miracle should be High Father because yeah. he is the actual son yeah. of High Father. Yeah, but he was raised on Apocalypse. Right, but also he doesn't Scott, know our ways or right. Whatever. Well, he's also not there. Like, right. So yeah, like, you were on Earth. Yeah, but really, it's his right. Right. Mm. So anyway, they bow. Why? Fine. Whatever. And so that the plan is, is that they're, he's going to send Barda and Mr. Miracle to go find and kill Granny Goodness because she is an incredible leader of armies and military. And if they can stop her, they might be able to win the war. Okay. I imagine she's a great leader because she just like, she's a harpy. She just like badgers <laughs> their troops into being like, go do this. No, no. She's just like, she is, there's a ruthlessness to her mm. that it's just like, you, you can't. You couldn't conceive of it. 
Right. And like King really brings that out here, like how messed up of a character she could be. <laughs> Good. They're like, oh. Because that is a messed up, as described, that's a messed up character. Yes, exactly. So, so but I can imagine it being like played for laughs too. Oh, she's like Randy, yeah, ha, ha, and she's got yeah, these yeah, death yeah. pits or whatever. Yeah, and, the, yeah, and like, ah, oh, she runs an orphanage. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, like his, like Orion's, like, like you know, your hatred for her, that that will work out, right? So we'll we'll send you to do that. Yeah, you've probably always wanted to kill her, yeah, right? Yeah, so just a nice chance. Yeah. So then they go to bed, and that night they're visited by Metron. Oh. Yeah, in the chair. With the and, chair. With the chair. Yeah. And Metron's like, Scott Free, you are not to know the face of God. Do you get it? What? You can't know the face of God. And Scott, and again, there's a lot of this like underlying humor to this book. Scott's like, it brought, or like Metron's here. <laughs> and he's like, she's like, we tell him to go away. <laughs> we have to go kill Granny in the morning. And he goes away. And you're like, did that happen? Right. Because she didn't look. She didn't see. Right, she, Are we seeing yeah. any of this? Was that a dream? Right. So they leave to go to see Granny. Granny's there. Um, and when we see Granny, she goes up to them both and she grabs Scott and she's like, oh my gosh, who let you grow up? <laughs> look at you. Look at how handsome like you are. His cheeks. Yeah. <laughs> so she's not her. Well... I'm not saying that she's, she's not her, but she's not in acting the thing like, that she raised. like what they remember. Right, and then she sees Barda, and like she's like, "Oh my gosh, how could you? Like, look at you. You were like this pigtailed little girl, and like, look at how like sh- like you know, <laughs> amazing you've like grown up to be." What are the armies doing while they're having this conversation? They just boom tube into their camp. Oh, okay. Like Granny knew they were coming. Ah. Barda has this moment. I really, really like this moment because I just thought it was like a really cool thing to say. Where Barda goes, "I'm too tall," like she's like, "I'm too tall." Mm. And Cranny goes like, oh, haven't you figured that out by now, sweetie? Everyone's too something. Hmm. And I'm like, oh. Oh, crap. Cranny, goodness. <laughs> Dropping the knowledge. Stab. Yeah. Ah! <laughs> so then she's like, let's go to the tent. I've made Jello. <laughs> so they sit what? and they have a conversation over Jello. <laughs> and while they're having Jello, one of the new gods is there. <laughs> and she's starving him to death. She has him like... To like tether to a chair, and there's a plate of Jello sitting in front but of him. He, can't, and he, can't, eat he it. can't have it. She's like, "Oh, I just like having like he can't. He's he's not eating because he's not allowed to eat. He's starving to death. But I like to let them watch us eat." And you're like, That's messed "Yeah, up. she's mean." You're like, "There's Granny. Yeah, and there she okay. is." That's disturbing. Yeah, it's not okay. So like, essentially, like they have like a like a just a general conversation, and then that night we see. Like, Mr. Miracle and Barda go to her tent when they open the tent flap up and, uh, like, it's dark in there. She uses a gun, blasts Barda, who's just knocked out. Oh. And she's like, Scott, come on, we got to talk, but there's no time. She goes, did Metron visit you last night? Mm. He's like, yeah, but I thought it was a dream. And he's, she's like, no, no, this is good. This is good. There's, like, a lot you need to know that's going on here. The fact is, Orion contacted me this morning and told me you were going to kill me because he's trying to, like, pin you guys for this. Mm. That like you would like breach things and like that's how we would make peace. Oh. Okay. And like, she keeps calling him my sweet boy, which I was always like, you're really attached to Scott specifically, even though you tortured the hell out of this kid. Yeah. Like, there's something different about Scott. And then we see that like at one point, Granny went to High Father and warned him that Darkseid had the equation. Okay. I'm like, did they have, like, a thing? I don't know. It's not really, like, mm. gone over. Yeah, before we okay. traded sons, we traded wives. <laughs> yeah. I sent Granny goodness, and I got nobody. <laughs> right, well, no. High Father has a wife, and it is supposedly Scott's mom. But it's, like, it's just interesting. Like, yeah. that, like, I don't know if that she's just worried that if Darkseid actually had the end of life equation, like, what could happen? Right. I don't it's know. It's like, I, I work for Darkseid, but I don't want him to, like, end everything. Right, right. <laughs> um... So essentially, she makes sure to like remind him that there's a prophecy, and the prophecy is, is that the son of Darkseid can kill Darkseid, and so seemingly that is Orion. But she's like, technically, you're also the son of Darkseid because hmm. you're his adopted son, and you were raised here. Right. So, so it, it kind of muddies the water of who should be inheriting your, uh, New Genesis too. Well, yeah. It, it, yeah, of course. Which I guess like probably has happened in history, right? Like because kings and stuff used to do this, where like. Yeah. The son of one would go live in right, another country. Right. And yeah. then well, like, like that person would be like, well, what if I want to rule? Yeah. Yeah, it's hostages. Yeah. <laughs> or you'd marry into a family or whatever. Yeah. But they don't really get too much That's of this. That's what co- I said, hostages. <laughs> you know, they don't really get too, too far in this conversation before Barda wakes back up and bludgeons Granny Goodness to death. Uh, well, and, and so they leave. And mission you're like, accomplished. Yeah, we've done it. Okay, that last panel where she's like just 
you see her eye looking out, but the rest of her is splattered. Yeah. That's creepy as all hell. Yeah. It's Jared's is an expert nice. at showing you gore without showing you gore. Yeah. We then see uh, Orion basically take Granny Goodness's head and, like, he takes it as a prize, basically. Right? right? Like, he's just like... <laughs> And he acts like this was his, the plan the whole time. Oh, you you actually killed her. Great. Yeah, cool. We'll no, just that's, put her head on a that's thing. That's awesome. Why yeah. not? Sure, cool. Um, Scott tells Barta a little story about how he's just like, did, did Granny ever tell you, like, the Christmas story? And she's like, no. What's Christmas? <laughs> yeah, she's like, no, Granny never told me stories. Right. And also, why would they have Christmas on Apocalypse? Well, it's really this horrific story. Yeah. Uh -huh. It's it's just it's this like terrible story that has almost nothing to do with Christmas except that like at the end of it she would say like Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's not a Christmas story just because you say Merry Christmas at the end. It's... Yeah, well, like it it has to, like it takes place during Christmas. Ah, it's just is not Christmas good. Apocalypse. What I, I, I I'm just guessing they're they're, this? they're they're fairly. I think they're aware of oh, Earth and such, right? Okay. So it's Christmas on Apocalypse. No. <laughs> So anyway, seemingly Scott's kind of upset about this whole thing, right? right? So he wakes up in the middle of the night, and when he goes out to sit on his couch again, he's got water. No, he's got milk this time. It's always milk. Oh, so they're back on Earth? Yeah, they go home. They killed Granny Goodness. They get so a break. So their mission's over for a while? They get to go home for a bit. They're uh, always, like, okay. they're usually sent home in between things for uh, a while. Like, they fight for, like, however long. It could be months there, and then they come home. Okay. And then they go back, and then they come home. Gotcha. And when, like, he has a seat, Forager is there. Who? Forager is one of the other people who lives on New Genesis. He's one of these bugs, right? Okay. And so, that like... That explains his face. Right? And, like... Explains his stupid bug face. <laughs> is that, like, a beetle mask? Kind of. Or, like, like, a scarab. A scarab, yeah. So, Forager comes to Mr. Miracle and says, like, listen, Orion sucks, and, like, you really should be in charge, and I've come to, like, say that, like, we will fight and die for you, Scott Free. Oh, because like I've heard that out of your battalion, you've had the fewest casualties of my people. Mm. Because I don't know if you know this, but 6.5 million of us have already died because Orion is putting us out front as cannon fodder. Oh, the bug people. Yeah, and yeah. so when our queen went to him and asked if he could kind of stop doing that, right. he executed her. Oh. And like, like. Mr. Miracle's like, no, that, no, someone would have told me that that happened. No, come on, come on. Uh, I'm telling you it happened. That's yeah. why I'm here. Right? And then a boom tube opens up. Light Ray like, like, comes out, uses his powers, and kills Forager. Ah. And, like, Mr. Miracle is like, Light Ray, is that true? What he said, is that true? And he's like, don't be stupid. And he leaves. <laughs> so like, that's a, don't be stupid, of course it's true, or don't be stupid, it's not true. Exactly. Yeah. No, 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 no. Um, so then we see Scott kind of go back to his everyday life of like doing death-defying like stunts. He's oh always stunting. <laughs> um, is oh. it is it hard for him to believe? I don't know too much about Orion. Is that like Orion wouldn't do that, or it's like no, Orion totally would do that. Why wouldn't you believe that he would do that? Like I I, th I think oh, it's like, I think he's like no, Orion. I don't want to believe that Orion would do that because mm. then I would have to take responsibility right. for something. Then I would yeah. Well, remember Cosmic Odyssey when he slaughtered all of those hawk people. Orion? Yeah. No. <laughs> okay, so he does do stuff like that. I think that honestly, it's just because of the fact that Scott doesn't want yeah. to to do this. Yeah. Like, you know what it's, I mean? It's like, like, it's easier for me if it's not true. And yeah. It's fine. Yeah, that that would be great. Right. It's not really my. I don't really get involved. Right. Scott's wearing a Batman shirt. Yeah. yeah. Orion wants them to come back early. He's calling them back from their like, you know, vacay. Their their, their shore leave. Yeah. Um, early. He's like, I really got to talk to him. Like, after what High Father said and Granny said and, like, you know, Metron and all this stuff and Forager, he's like, I have to deal with this now, right? Yeah. Like, and Bart is kind of like... Mm. No, you don't. Or, like, kind of like, I don't know if what you're saying actually happened. Right. You're talking about Metron, and I didn't see him. Yeah, and, like, she didn't hear the Granny conversation. Yeah. And, like, you know what I mean? Like, I know she knocked me out. Yeah, there's just so it. many things, like... Yeah, he's that, got this whole, like, there's this conspiracy, and she's like, well, I've been I, with you, and I haven't seen any of it. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe and, you're just crazy. Yeah, and, like, he's like, there's something wrong with me, and she's like, listen, after the war, we will talk all about this, but right now, I need you to, like, man up mm. and put your little and superhero cape on, and we gotta keep doing this. Uh, someone comes by, they want a selfie, they take a selfie. <laughs> Was so, that Thaddeus? No, that's Funky Flashman. Yeah, of course. Of course what? Yeah. Funky Flashman um, is a character that was created by Jack Kirby back in the 70s. He, like, shows up in, like, issue 
four or five or something like that of uh -huh. Mr. Miracle. And I thought that was a joke at the beginning of the book. Nope, Funky Flashman is a character. And um, he is like kind of like a like PR person for Mr. Miracle in a way. He's a hype man. He's a hype man, and he's based off Stanley. Oh, hence the shades, cool. Hence the shades, hence the bravado, hence the kind of being a dumbass. Yeah, okay. Um, and so like that's like seemingly apparently when Did he. Did you get it, Stan? I got you. I got you. <laughs> Well, it's funny because apparently, like, back in the day, this character just shows up randomly. And, like, it's because of that. And, like, it kind of just randomly shows up here, uh -huh. too. Like, yeah. So, this is Even him. Even in DC books, Stan is getting his cameo. Yeah. Well, <laughs> he's a part of the lore. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, he's part of it. But, like, he shows up seemingly as Mr. Miracle goes to talk to Orion. It's like, why is he here? Yeah, what? Is he here? I don't know. Probably not. Right? So, like, um... Orion's like, yeah, you should be pre prepping your armies. And, like, he's like, listen, um, Father said the dark side is the anti-life equation. And, like, I think that might be inside of me. And I think that's what made me cut me, myself. Oh. I think the anti-life equation got to me. And because that's what the anti-life equation could do. It could get into your head and completely alter the way you think and do anything and everything. Hmm. And he's just like, I just want to know, is it in you? Is it in you, Orion? Because Orion's acting aggressively, right? Right. And then Orion just beats the hell out of Mr. Miracle. Huh. Like, just beats the hell out of him. And he's just like, um, he's like, you have to witness the divine Scott. Look at me. Look at me. And he takes his helmet off and we see Mitch Jarrett's like take his face and like it becomes distorted. It becomes almost dark side Ian. Mm. And then Orion tells him over and over again that this is the face of God. Oh. So which is what the kid said. Yep, it's also what Metron said he shouldn't see. It's also what a person who was really full of himself would say about themselves. Right. So it's a lot of things it could mean, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. So then, like, um, Barda and Scott are back home, and, like, Barda's taking care of him, and, like, Light Ray shows up, Ugh. and, like, Barda gets up, and it's just like, get the hell out of here, and she, like, smacks him around a little bit. Nice. And, like, Scott's wearing a Green Lantern shirt now, and he's just like, hey, <laughs> I'm going to get some coffee. You want, you want some coffee? And, like, Light Ray comes to say that, like, he like is there to tell him that Orion has said that Mr. Miracle has to go on trial for treason. What? For what? Well, because they believe that he is an agent of Darkseid. Oh. Because well, he said that he had the anti-life equation. Yeah, of him? he did admit that he thinks he has. Yep. The anti which and so, would mean he's under Darkseid's control, yep. right? And so Barra beats the hell out of Light Ray. Like, she just beats she's the like, crap well, out of you. Well, he's not going to be on trial. Right, I'm but... I'm going to beat the shit out of you. Yeah, I'm just going to beat the crap out of you. No, yeah. he goes on trial. Oh. It's going to be set for, like, I think, like, a week from now or whatever. But, like, he, they get to pick where it is, and he picks Earth. Ah. He's like, I want to have it where I'm home. He wants um, to bring all these friggin' new gods to Earth? Oh, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Um, at least Superman will be here to help. Well, <laughs> right? Nah. I feel like Superman would say, like, No. Earth is off limits to yeah, your you can't. crazy no, new god no, trials. No, they just show up. Earth, Earth is closed. <laughs> it's closed today. Sorry. Um, no, um, it is the next day. Okay. Because like Bart is like, maybe we should pick up a veggie tray or, or something. And they're like watching TV. <laughs> and then like the same. Because <laughs> they're going to be guests? Yeah. Yeah. So then like that same, um, you know, TV show host is on. And like they're doing the end, the end of each TV of these. TV show host from like the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Yeah, that would guy would not exist da, da, today. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Um, oh, the guy who, who was interviewing Mr. Miracle before. Exactly. Yeah. Each issue ends with like an old school style. When me, he needs Mr. Off. Miracle, blah blah blah. Like, and we see something similar to that here, where it's just like, oh, he needs Mr. Miracle. And then the TV, like, they fall asleep, and we see a speech bubble that just says, "I drew God." And then Granny Goodness is there wearing like a cardigan, looking over her sunglasses, hmm. and says like, "But no one knows what God looks like." And you're like, "What is happening?" Interesting. Yeah. So Mr. Miracle performs another trick. He goes home. He had like a show to do in the morning. And they got the veggie tray. They got the veggie tray. <laughs> Wait, he's still like doing his like job. He has his as, job like, in the morning, and yeah. then he has his trial in the afternoon. <laughs> so does he, he get a double lawyer? book myself? To... No. No, no lawyer. No. So the new guys show up. It's Orion and Light Ray and this other guy who's just like there for like security. They're just in his house. They're just in his house, all sitting on the couch. Right. Okay. We don't need to stand on ceremony. Yeah. And Orion's like, as for, as High Father, I'm responsible for appointing the accuser, the defender, and the judge, and I pick me. Yep. Because I have the right to do that. Right. So I'm I'm all of it. <laughs> okay. The accuser, 
the defender, defender and, the, and the, judge. the judge. Yeah. Right? So basically, like, they're like, you know, shall we begin? And so he goes and get the, Mr. Runkle goes to get a carrot. It's, it's a very, like, funny, weird, tense little moment where he's like, all right, go for it. So basically, Orion's whole thing was that, like, you told me you thought that the anti-life equation was within you. And if you were an agent of Darkseid, he uses this whole, like, method of, like, you know, I'm going to ask you true or false things. Like, you know, you accused High Father of being infected by, like, the anti-life equation. You, like, think the, uh, the High Father is an agent of Darkseid, blah, 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 all mm -hmm. these things, right? I'm going to ask you leading questions to say true or false to so that it comes to the conclusion I want. Right, exactly. Yeah. Note the glitches. Yeah, yeah, it's glitching. It's glitching, glitching, glitching out. It's glitching. It's glitching all over the place. Like, he says, like, I am an agent of Darkseid. And, like, you know, he's like, you're an agent of Darkseid. Like, you know, would an agent of Darkseid deny that they were an agent of Darkseid? <laughs> right. He just goes on and on and on and on right. and on. Just because you say you are not doesn't mean that you aren't. Yeah. yeah. And then, like, inevitably... That, in fact, proves that you are... Right. Yeah. <laughs> an agent of Darkseid. Like, four agents of die. And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, that's not... You You have to have an answer. You can't say, I don't know. Um, They get a, a very awkward delivery of a microphone that they needed. It's like, it's... Why do they need uh, a microphone? Uh, they needed it for their computer or whatever. Yeah, oh. they ordered it. Oh. Like Amazon shows up at the wrong time. Right. Um, Mr. Miyoko accuses him of like setting this all up as a trap. Yeah. And um, he's just like, sure, everything's a trap. Anything could be a trap. It's all a trap, right? Cool, whatever. Bart is like really threatening Light Ray. Light Ray is like, you know, like I will take you on. He's got the biggest black eye possible. Yeah. Bart is like, I will, I will crush you, little man. Yeah, I already like, did. Yeah, like, shh, go ahead. Um. He goes into how much like Orion or how much um, Mr. Miracle hates Orion, how much he hates New Genesis. He hates his career. He hated his life. Mm. He's like, but he loves Big Barda, right? No, <laughs> they don't talk about that. He's like, you hate yourself and you hate God. Like that's like, literally, he just like cuts him to the core with this questioning, right? And so then like Scott kind of freaks out and just starts screaming. Barda hugs him to calm him down. Orion's mm. like, okay, uh, oh, because he gets like punched by. Mr. Miracle. Uh, Ow. Yeah. Orion goes and has a carrot. <laughs> <laughs> like, you hit me. You hit me. Oh, my God. Carrots make everything everything better. Yeah, he's like, you're guilty. Oh. You'll be executed in three days. I'll see you then. And what? they leave. Why in three days? Because that's he gives him three days to, to say goodbye. He oh. judges and says. So then why. we cut to the three days that they have. Um, first part is that um, over at, like, Grauman's Chinese Theater, Mr. Miracle gets to put his handprints at signature... <laughs> along with Barda as well, oh. on the Hollywood walk there, right? He looks over, and he sees that Jack Kirby's prints are there. Oh. And his signature. He puts his hands in the prints, and they're smaller. Oh. And you're That's like, Jack nice. Kirby never got that. Really? That never happened. Mm. Stan got a, a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, but Kirby never got this. Mm. And you're like, okay. A weird little moment there. Well, why is Jack Kirby in the DC universe? <laughs> so basically, Funky Flashman's like, "Hey, we gotta like figure out your like you know story about being executed by <laughs> High Father." Yeah, how here. we gonna spin this? Because too. like the new Genesis, new gods, like the whole thing, like that's really hot and up and coming right now. We don't want to <laughs> screw that over. So they're like, "We're not talking to you." Can't believe you didn't let me film your trial. Yeah. <laughs> does she? Does Big Barda see him? Is it unclear whether she sees? No, him? she does. Okay, she's so like, he's "Shut there. up." Okay. So then they go upstairs to their condo and they have sex. And Sweet. we see Mr. Miracle in this messianic position. Yeah, she and when ties you, him up. And when you think about him in this, like, you know, cross on the cross style positioning, and you remember the fact that he is the son of God who was sacrificed right. to make peace. Right, right, You're right. You're like, Interesting. okay, These, this whole thing kind of makes sense. Yeah. And, of course, his mask is his dick. Uh, his mask is there because, you know, we can't show that, as right. Batman Damned proved later on. Yeah. <laughs> um, because this isn't a Black Label book. This is just right. DC. So that we, or it's yeah. glitching. We can't show that. No, 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 no. Um, Tom King would say that this sequence is supposed to be about, like, love and them, like, giving in to what each other wants and that feeling of safety with another person. Okay. But it could also be about the fact that they are both damaged individuals who aren't dealing with their internal feelings, and so it's really just about the physical. Mm -hmm. Think about that one. <laughs> um, so they have a whole lot of sex, and then he goes to Oberon's grave. Mm. 
And let's point this one out too, because I'm sure many um, good hardcore fans of DC know that Oberon did not have the last name Kurtzberg, because that was Jack Kirby's name. Kurtzberg? Kurtzberg. That was like his real name? That's last his name? real name. Ah, hmm. okay. And so he's given that name. Gotcha. I'm going to show you something. Oh, that's nice. I'm, I'm going to show you something real that's, quick. Yeah. I'm going to learn you something. I'm going to learn you. I'm going to learn you something. Yeah. Is Was he not drawn that way before? No, he always was. Oh, okay. He was always drawn like this. Interesting. Wh okay. okay. Granny Goodness also kind of looks like Jack no, Kirby. No, he doesn't. <laughs> Jack Kirby does not look like Granny Goodness. Anyway, <laughs> so the two of them go there. That's one of the things he wants to do in his three days that he has left. They are going to go someplace else. They get stuck in L.A. traffic because they live in L.A., by the way. Okay. Um, they can't boob tube out of there? No, you can't boob tube on the same planet like that. Not Earth, at least. It would destroy it. Oh. Okay. But, like, she's like, maybe it'd be worth it. <laughs> like, there's, like, a chance. There's, like, a chance of what happened. Right. Um, but anyway, they're, like, if they're in a the car, like, you know, Mr. Miracle's like, hey, Barta, like, do we have a song? What's our song? Like, was there something that we, like, you know, when we first met or whatever? And she's mm -hmm. like, we met in the X pits that was, like, just the screams of the damned. And so, like... You want that to be our song? Mr. Miracle's like, play... Hey, Motherbox, play the screams of the damned from the X pits. What? And he's like... She... <laughs> He's like, specify <laughs> when. He's like, oh, about 10 years back. <laughs> and they play it, and, like, there's just all these screams going. And it's just... And they just laugh. What I really dig about this sequence huh. is, like... Here are two individuals dealing with things in a very real way because it's like they both know that this man is going to die in a few days. Mm. And they don't know what to do about it. And instead of addressing it, they're using humor to deal with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I was like, that's fun. He's wearing a flash shirt now. Now he's wearing a flash shirt. Mm. That's right. Um, they go and have a sandwich that he loves. It's his favorite sandwich in the world. Like, he won't share it with her. And she's like, she's not eating anything because she's like, how am I supposed to do that? Like, we... Just I'm not like, hungry. Like I'm a oh, yeah, yeah, and I and I'm not gonna be for a bit. Like yeah. they go to this this lake that he wants to take a look at. He loves how the water looks. He takes her to a carnival because like he wants to win her a prize. He always said he would. Mm. And she's like, we live in a condo. There's no room for it. And she's like, it doesn't matter. Like that's not what the point of this is right, right now. Like right. I want to do this. So inevitably, he doesn't win her the prize. <laughs> he like tells the guy that he'll call his girlfriend and like say that like it's a message from Mr. Miracle, and he you can't escape how much this guy loves you. Right. Okay. And so he's given the prize. <laughs> 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 oh, honey. <laughs> then they go um, to the beach where they watch the sunset, and he talks about Descartes. When he said three days, is that like another allegory of Jesus? It could be. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. You're all threat here. <laughs> um. Because, like, especially in the beginning when you see High Father, High Father looks like the bearded, you know, god with the shepherd's crook. Mm. But what's funny is that, like, Dark Side, even though he has parademons, mm -hmm. right? Like, he is known as a god as well. Right. Like, he's... They're all... They're yeah, all gods. Yeah. Right? Like, he's not, like, the devil. He's not a fallen... Right. You know, new Genesis god. He's just a god. He just happens to also be what we would consider to be the devil. Right. He's just a dick about it. <laughs> he's just a big dick about well, it. Well, he's the Old Testament god, and High Father is <laughs> yeah. the New Testament god. It's like just wrath of brimstone. Here it comes. So you talk about Descartes and like the whole like I think therefore I am mm -hmm. concept and what that really means and the breakdown of it and that like you know like he said all of that because like he meant like you know like you know, just because I, I, I'm here, I am thinking, but like, what if I'm just a brain in a jar kind of thing? Yeah. And then like the whole like- How do I know that this is real? How do I know Yeah, and then like, so then he brings in me. God and that like, God is good because like, you know, if you believe that like good is better than bad, then God is good. And like, he just, he, he just really breaks this whole thing down. Mm -hmm. And that like, essentially he tries to prove that God exists through that, but you can't do that. That's not really how it works because like you're already presuming that God exists. So you can't just prove it through that means right. of logic. You can't use something to prove itself. Right. And this whole like, like, pa like this whole set of pages here is something that like, I'm gonna let you guys at home read through and mm. like decide what you think about it. But when you like, when you consider the fact that he is literally a new God, son of God raised by the devil, who is also a god. Yeah. It's it's fundamentally interesting that he's questioning this and talking about this and what right. this all means. Yeah. What does it mean to be a new god? Or like, what is, you know, like what that's is That's just it, someone who's really strong? Right. Like what is that? And like what makes it real? Hmm. Right? Yeah. So anyway, then they drive up to look at the like stars above the valley except when they get there there's so much light pollution you can't see, you can't the, see stars. the stars. Yeah. And so then Was like Was it their first time in LA? Right? No. Um so like 
essentially, he's like, all right, well, this failed, so, like, I guess we'll just go home. So they go home. They seemingly, you know, make love again differently this time in a more, like, real way because as we see leading up to it, like, Barda starts crying. She finally breaks down. Because mm. Barda's not really that person who, like, talks, with, like, a lot about her feelings. Right. She may or may not be feeling them. We don't really know. And so, like, finally she breaks down. Like, Scott kind of talks through all of it. Like, yeah. he's just like, bop, 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 bop. So, essentially... Um, yeah, she's been... She was trying to be strong for him. Like, yep. he's the one that's supposed to die in three days, so she's like, yeah, let's go put your hands in the in front of the Chinese theater. Right. Let's go eat your favorite sandwich. Let's do all this stuff. I'm, I'm here for you. But right. But she's also the one who has to live after it. Yeah, it's like, she's going to have to carry this. So then, like... Essentially, it's the day of Funky Flashman shows up with the two guys. Oh my God, Funky! Get Fun the fuck out, get of, out here. of here! Get Funky out of Flashman. here! Get out of here! He shows up with two guys from New Genesis, and they're gonna go downstairs for a press conference. He's like, "We're gonna do this whole thing," and then like, hold for applause and blah blah blah. <laughs> Barta, okay. sh Barta shows up, you no know, stitch of clothes on it mm. with with her rod, and she just beats the hell out of all of them. Wow, including Funky Flashman. Oh, she gives him a good smack in the head. Wow. And then, like, you know, she just looks at, at him and just says, stay. Hmm. And you're like, damn. Aww. No. Staying. She's like, all right, we're not going to. Damn. Yeah. So then they take the bodies of the new Genesis folk. They, they put them into this thing that he must have used during one of his escapes called the flame urn. That he, they incinerate their bodies. Uh. Funky's, like, attached to, like, a thing back here, seemingly to keep his, like, neck from breaking. <laughs> He's in traction. He's in traction. Like, new god traction. <laughs> So then, like, they just go to New Genesis and just start beating their way through it. And as they're doing this, they're having the most mundane conversation possible where she's just like, I want to redo the condo. And mm -hmm. she explains all her reasons for wanting to do it. She's like, here's my plan. We're going to reduce the size of the kitchen. Because, look, I know I said I wanted a big <laughs> kitchen. We thought we were going to cook and take classes. But, like, mm -hmm. I can make an omelet. That's it. And he's like, I like your omelet. And she's like, yeah, but I can make an omelet in a tiny kitchen. Also, like, I'm not going to make an omelet every day. Yeah, like, it's fine. We eat out a lot. Don't worry about it. Plus, I want to do open floor plan. We can entertain better that way. Yeah, exactly. So she's like, Think it's of cool. all the veggie platters I can buy. Right? So then she's like, this is part of, and the reason I want to bring up the kitchen thing is because there's, like, an interesting conversation that happens, and there's, like, these little moments where I'm just like, are they important? I don't know. Are they there just to make you question things? I'm not sure. Hmm. He talks about a counter that's... It's very real. Yeah, all oh, the whole thing. The way he writes these two is so real, and it makes... Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure, based on an interview I read with Tom King, talking about this book in, like, retrospective, Tom King says that he didn't have a great childhood, right? Mm. And he really relates to um, Kirby quite a bit. And so I think he has, a, like, a similar relationship with his wife. And so it's really easy for him to draw on that to write this right. dialogue, which I think is why it's so natural mm -hmm. and so not like what you've read from him before. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So anyway, they talk about this counter that's in the kitchen, and that she's like, we'll take that out. We don't need that. It'll open it up. And, like, he's like, yeah, but that's where we put, like, the magazines and the bills and, like, all this mm, other crap. We're going to put all our stuff. Yeah, we're going to put our crap. And she's just like, yeah, yeah, Like, if that counter wasn't there, I think that we wouldn't have that stuff. And he's like, but, like, the magazines exist. And <laughs> so do the exist. papers and the bills, yeah. right? And they have to have somewhere to go. And she says they're only re real because they're there. If there's no there for them to be, then they're not real. Hmm. And he doesn't address it. He just says, I like magazines. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's not really some of the point, man. Right? So then they continue to fight their way through. It's a, this really cool sequence of, like, traps and all this stuff that they have to go through <laughs> in order to do it. Uh -huh. in <laughs> including the tide dragon, which they fight. <laughs> oh. The um, dragon that makes the tides. Oh, yeah, that's just a room in this, like, palace or whatever that's just filled with water? Yeah, yeah. Well, okay. it's, it's a security measure. Yeah. Right? It's the, it's the the aquatic security system. Right? In fact, I they, mean, that or it's the uh, trash compactor. You just feed everything into the dra to the tide like dragon. The, it's like the moat. It's Orion's pet. It's like he had it when he was little. His parents, like, you know, high father was like, you're never going to take care of it. They flushed it down, obviously, the new Genesis toilet system and it ended up here yeah you know? and, and it grew to the size of the environment size of container yeah. like a goldfish right exactly it, it's basically a goldfish tide dragon same thing same thing this is what you got to watch out for yeah so they bust out kevin killed the tide dragon the reason i say that is because if you're not paying attention they kill the tide dragon its body en ends up against this glass window that they bust through uh. and then they use its entrails to cross the forever void <laughs> it's like they scratched its entrails to where they needed to go okay 
So nice. they keep talking about their apartment, how it's like, we're going to make our bedroom, like this bedroom smaller, and we're going to knock out this one wall here, and we're going to change this, and we're going to blah, 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 blah. Like, we're going to make a new bedroom here. And like, she's just going through all of the plans that she has for the future of their condo. Mm -hmm. I love the, the um, contrast. Of what they're doing? Of what yeah. they're doing and what they're talking about, uh -huh. because like it's actually it very is. reinforcing, because if they're talking about like making a better life for themselves and like changing things in their apartment, yes, it makes sense that they're fighting for all of it. Exactly. That's so cool. They talk a lot about their closet too, about the fact that like, she wants to get rid of like his closet. And like, he's like, but that's that's my closet. Yeah, where will my stuff go? Yeah. She's like, but you're tinier, you need she's less like, stuff. Well, she's like, you know, like, no, I have all these things because she admits that she buys things because she didn't have them when she was in the X pit. She's like, I don't need those. Mm. I buy them because I can. Right. And I'm like, oh, cool. That's very introspective of you, Barta. Mm -hmm. They talk a little bit about Granny due to that. And the fact that like, you know, he goes, did, did she, like, she said like, she loved me. Did she ever say she loved you? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And like, she's like, yeah, but the difference was like, you believed her, Scott. Uh. And I'm like, so this is like another Ouch. example of how messed up Granny Goodness is as she's like taking you as a child and putting you into like this lake of fire. Yeah. She she's... tells you she loves you. Yeah. And you're like, okay, that's, that's not okay. Yeah. That's, that's not okay. But it's like an effed up like way of controlling right. children. Right. Well, it's it's very like it's it's an abusive relationship, yeah. but like to an, an extreme that we can't comprehend. Yeah. Um, and so anyway, so they continue to do that. They, they talk get about, across the chasm. They get across the like, chasm. They get like into this like you know Indiana Jones like oh the ceiling is you know oh yeah yeah shrinking on them. And like then they fight Light Ray and Barta beats the hell out of him. Yeah. I have been waiting this entire book for this. Yeah, <laughs> right? <laughs> so she beats the crap out of him and he's just like, wait, I don't understand. Who's the new bedroom for? And and then as they're fighting, she goes, I'm pregnant. Oh. She continues to fight. She says this, they look at each other, she continues to fight her way to Light Ray. Yeah. And then he just runs up behind her and he hugs her and he goes, I love you. And she mm. goes, I believe you, Scott Free. And you're like, oh. Mm. That's so nice. So then they get to the door where Orion is, and he's like, what do I do? And she's like, you go in there. You go in there and you freaking And you kill talk him. to him. Oh. That's what she says. You go in there and you talk to him. And he's like, and if he doesn't want to talk, then she's like, well. <laughs> it's asterisked out, but right. you, know, you get the feeling of what she might be referring to, but what, he, what she might want him to cut off. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so he goes inside. This page is nothing but glitches. Yeah, it's hard to tell what's happening. What he there. sees is Orion collapsed on the floor, yeah, it looks like he's battered bleeding. and bloodied. Yeah. And then he just screams, What did you do? And when you look up, you see the image of Dark Side that says Dark Side Dark Side does not do. Dark Side is. There's a boom tube. Barda comes running in and it's just like, What happened? Like, I I I what happened? He's like, I saw him. I saw the face of God. Mm. And you're like, okay, Orion is dead. So then we go to an appointment with... So if the judge is dead, does the sentencing still stand? Well, I guess he's in charge now, He's right? high father. Yeah. That's it. There's he's no one good. else who would yeah. be. Exactly. So we cut to um, the future, essentially. This is how I know that there are jumps, because Bart is giving birth. But right. again, we don't know how long a new Genesis... Right, maybe... Yeah, she's only pregnant for like a couple days. Who knows? And then the I don't know. Full term. Yeah. I yeah. get the feeling that if it was a quick pregnancy, they would have already had the room planned yeah. out a while back. Well, she didn't tell him. Like, like that's literally like it. And like, yeah. we see them have sex the two, the two times. Like, right. But she could have been pregnant from before. Right. She could have been, or she could have just known. He right. also has a big beard at this point. He didn't yeah. have a big beard before. Yeah, his beard is a good indicator, by the way, throughout this book, how much time has passed. It continues mm. to grow. Um. Anyway. They it's go, no shave November, so you know he's not shaving. Exactly, yeah. because, you know, he's, he participates. <laughs> Hashtag quarantine. He's like, he drives up. The, the guy's like, oh, there's a, there's a parking lot on Olympic. You got to go park there. He's like, you can't just drop people off here. And he's like, I was told there was a valet. He's like, I'm the valet. And he's just like. That's what you do, man. And he's just like, there's, an, there's a thing on Olympic. He's like, I should have dropped you off, Barter. They doesn't. They go in to the hospital. They get her all set up. She is starting to be like three centimeters dilated, right? They're hanging out. It's like awkward because they don't know what to do, right? And yeah. then all of a sudden they hear a boom. Uh oh. And like Barter's like, damn it. I told them not to come. She's like, yeah. Well, he's like, I better go outside. 
Even though, like, I'm literally the person they're fighting a war against, mm. but someone's got to talk to them. When he gets out there, the female Furies have shown up to support Barda because she's having a baby. Oh, oh that's funny. <laughs> so we have Bernadette, Matt Harriet, Stampa, and Lashina. And Lashina's like, I told them not to come. Like, for real, I told them that they weren't going to be welcomed here, right. but they came anyway. And he's like, no, it's cool. You, you're, you're cool. Uh, Barda will appreciate it. You can't come in the room, though. Mm. Like, you can't, you can't do that. Yeah, so the hospital's got, it's got rules. They're real, they're real sensitive they're about sticklers. that. They're yeah. sticklers. <laughs> sticklers. So then, like, he goes back The only reason in. I'm allowed in is because I'm wearing my Superman shirt now. Ta-da. Also, I'm her husband. Also, um, I look like a normal person. And yeah, you that kind of helps. look like you. Oh, come so. on. She looks like a, a daredevil. <laughs> She's hey, going to jump a chasm on a motorcycle. They don't, they don't know what a daredevil is. <laughs> no. <laughs> so anyway. Damn you. They're that was sit- good. <laughs> they're sitting there and, like, He's coming up with names. Mm-hmm. He's like, have an iron breaker. Because he's coming up with, like, new guy <laughs> yeah, names. Yeah, right, She's right. like, no. I was thinking <laughs> How about, Steve? like, a normal yeah. Earth person? He's name. like, I had an uncle, a great uncle named Iron Breaker. She's like, no, no. So as they're chatting. Be Veronica. And, like, he's trying to come up with things that might help her out, like spicy foods or stuff like that. And he's just like, when I, she goes, when I was seven, Granny held me under the firefall of Euphoria. <laughs> and, like yelled at me to keep your mouth open little girl and let the burn go into you she's like i'm good <laughs> she's like she said that granny would said that you would eventually love it she's like i never did mm. she's like you never do so anyway as they're having this conversation all of a sudden barda goes where's the beeping because there's a heart rate monitor on her stomach mm. and the beeping has stopped oh and so he's like no it's fine it's fine it's fine it's totally cool it's probably just like you know whatever it's fine so he immediately goes finds a nurse doctor i think she's the doctor and uh Doctor comes in. He's like, okay, it's all right. Barda starts crying, and she's just like, no, it's okay. It's okay. Like, you know, at one point, she goes, like, your your mommy's here. And it's like, the, you see this, like, softer side of Barda come mm-hmm. out. You know what I mean? Like, she's going to have a baby. You know, this is exciting. And now I can't hear its heartbeat anymore. Right. They roll Barda yeah, over, out. and they find the heartbeat. Right. Like, the baby shifted or whatever. Yeah. So they had to move the So, sensor. like, after that has happened, and, like, there's that tension, again, Time and time again, what we see from Barda and Mr. Miracle is this punctuation of humor, and he goes, Axe Blow? <laughs> oh, names. Yes. She's like, no. No, that's terrible. No. That's real bad. We're not. Mm-mm. That's not a good one. We're not going to do that. <laughs> so then, but Mr. Miracle goes outside to check on the Furies, and he's just like, okay. Like, last year is the only one who's kind of like, hey, how is she? What's going on? Mm-hmm. And he's just like, it's fine. We're all good. Like, whatever. And so then, like, Bernadette turns around and is just like, there is no birth on Apocalypse. When the child is ready, the child is cut from the mother's womb. Mm. And so I brought you this Farron knife. <laughs> it kills gods and it, you'll be able to use it when you need to. And he's mm-hmm. like, cool. <laughs> She's like, one day I will use it to kill you, High Father, <laughs> on the field of battle. And he's like, okay. Sweet. Okay, well, I'm not going to give this back. <laughs> oh, I lost it. <laughs> they put it in the autoclave. I don't, I don't know what <laughs> happened after that. Anyway, so he just takes it and like, Puts this on his stuff. He's yeah, just like, right, well, whatever. Put that over there. <laughs> it's explained that Bernadette is the sister of Desaad, who's like one of the right-hand men of Darkseid. Yes, I remember Desaad. Desaad. Yeah, yeah. yeah so this he's is, cloaked. Yes, this is his sister. Okay. Right? And it was made from the flesh of... Um, I, yeah, it's made from Darkseid's own flesh. That's what it is. The knife is? Yeah. What? Yeah. I guess because he has really tough flesh. Yeah. So well, like, presumably Desaad made it in order to maybe kill Darkseid one day, but whatever. Oh. But she's like, it would kill me, and she's just doing it because she's mad that I killed Granny. Oh. And he's like, well, he, he, she seems sincere. I don't know. <laughs> so she starts kind of having contractions, right? Like, we're getting closer. And then, like, he gets a ping on his mother box, and they're like, hey, there's all this stuff going on. Like, three million, like, of Apocalypse's army just boom-tubed in. He's just like, Ugh. listen, I'm, like, kind of in the middle of something. <laughs> yeah. Why don't so you, like, handle it? She tells him he can go. And he's like, no, no, no. I, 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 they, they got this. Right. So he just puts it away. Like, it's, it's fine. <laughs> like he's getting paged. Ah, it's work, Exactly. <laughs> so then she starts cursing, and she's like, hey, do you remember the Jake's, Jacob's Ladder? And he's like, yeah, it was the only way out of the X-Pit. And the idea was that beyond that was beyond Granny's reach. It was mm. heaven. Was to get out of there. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, he tried to climb it and such. And, like, that's where she first saw him was him climbing the Jacob's Ladder. And that, like, every time that they would be chasing him as he was trying to escape, he would look down and wave and smile. And she's like, we'd always catch you. But, like, you know, whatever. And so she's like, we should name our our child Jacob. And so, like, 
she starts pushing, the baby comes out, the baby is blue because oh. the umbilical cord is wrapped around its neck. Oh no. Um, again, we see some glitchy panels here. Yeah, yeah. Um, it comes out, Bart is like, it's not crying. Why is it crying? It's not crying. And like, he's just like, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Like every time something happens, like the only thing he can do to tell her is that it's gonna be fine, it's right. okay. <laughs> They take the baby, they start trying to get the cord off, but they can't cut it. Nothing they have can cut the cord. It's too, too strong. Right, it's and so he's like, oh, hang on, stuff. and he goes and gets the Farron knife, and he uses it to cut the cord off the baby, and the baby cries. Yay. And he's just like, okay, cool. Oh, man, I gotta thank the Furies. <laughs> right? So he goes back out there, and he's like, his name's Jacob, and uh, and it's funny, because Lashina's like, and how's Barda? Because I think they're close, right? Mm -hmm. And she's like, she's strong, she's good. It's cute. Stomp was like, she's the strongest, whatever. And he gives her back, he gives Bernadette back the knife. He's like, thank you. And he's like, she's like, I am going to use this to kill you one day. He's like, see, uh, when fine. you say things like that, that makes me not want yeah, to give why, it back to you. Yeah, why did I give it back to you? That's stupid. Just a note, Jacob is Jack Kirby's real name. Oh. Um. Hmm. So anyway, this is the first, like, grandson of, like, this is the first child born of Apocalypse and New Genesis. It's the first combination of these two. I am so glad huh. that the baby did not stay blue. I was really worried it was a dark side baby. Right? No, it was just... And then we'd get, you know, it was oh, just some God. weird cosmic ghost rider crossover. <laughs> no! I got baby Thanos and baby dark side. I'm the intergalactic babysitter. God damn it. <laughs> um, so we go back to the war. And so the, basically the next set of this like chapter is that like we go back and forth between their life raising a child and their life waging war right because he's high father yeah. so he has to keep going back right. they just take turns so sometimes bart is there and we check in with mr miracle where like he's dealing with funky and the baby and like right. how he Plus does he's still got to do his act on earth because he's still got to make money right? i don't know i don't know about that necessarily but like we don't really see well, that how we... do they pay for their like condo i don't know <laughs> Goodwill. Um, I'll try to use New Genesis money. Yeah. It looks all weird. Right. They're yeah. like, what is what is this? <laughs> well, I could pay with like apocalypse bucks, but you don't want those. <laughs> you know how like when someone's been like taking care of someone, so Funky's been there with Barda, and he's just like, that's not how Barda does it. <sighs> and he's just like, yeah, thank you, <laughs> thank you, Funky. God damn it! And then we cut back to, of course, him fighting on the battlefield, talking to Barda while she's racing the kid, mm. right? Like I being what, like, over, like Bluetooth. No, they use the, the mother boxes. Oh, okay. Right, and, and just being like, you know, like, oh, like, he did this, and blah, 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 and like, you know, like, oh, he's not sleeping, blah, 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 right? And we, I love this crazy New Genesis like, medic. Like, yeah. <laughs> this, like, late. Awesome. Yeah, so he gets shot in the leg. Like, yeah. he's like, because he runs at the front of his people. Like, mm. he is like... He's a leader. He's, he's a leader, front, right? Yeah. Even though, like, seemingly Mr. Miracle may not have wanted to do this. Like, he's doing a right. good job, but, like, he's doing the job he knows how to do. Yeah. But he's also not, like, letting the bugs die alone. Yeah. Right. At one point later on, like, it's mentioned, like, while they're fighting that, like, he holds them in reserve. Hmm. And he sends the new gods out first. Oh. It's, like, just such a, like, a, just a sentence thrown in there that has, yeah. like, no bearing on what's happening. It's just in there that, like, King's, like... Yeah, Mr. He's Miracle to make thinks up about for this. What happened? But to him what before. his brother did, his yeah. half brother, he doesn't really count him as a brother at all. Right. So anyway, this I just got to mention this because there's a Batman toy in this. We see a lot of toys from the DC universe of characters. Funky gets the kid this Batman because he loves Batman. Everybody loves Batman, right? Mm -hmm. And he's just like, no, babies can't have toys in their crib at this age because they could die. Yeah. And like Funky's like, no, Batman doesn't kill babies, and he's like, Batman could kill babies. Okay, like look, <laughs> like that's Batman yeah. kills babies. We see a lot of the like aftermath of war. We see a lot of the new gods and like the fact that they don't have the energy to boom tube them back to New Genesis for proper burial and light rays. Mm. Like that's like what we're about to do is wrong. And so like basically light ray like creates like a trench for them to all go into and it's like a mass burial. Yeah. And this is on Apocalypse? Uh, it's difficult to tell because I seemingly, I, th I think they're, yes, I think they're on Apocalypse, but also it's indicated that like a lot of times that like they are fighting on New Genesis as well. So mm. I assume it is because it looks like a hellish landscape. There's a lot of fire. But it could also just be that wherever Apocalypse goes. Yeah. And wherever the force of Apocalypse It could go. be some other planet in between. I was going to argue right? it was Apocalypse some... because I remember seeing, I thought he was there. And well, now yeah, I'm no, realizing a... that's a statue. Well, what if they have to take that everywhere? That'd be great, <laughs> right? Like Roman centurions who yeah. would like carry banners and yeah, things no, like we that. We have to bring this. War is here. Here's the statue of Darkseid. Do Look over it. Do they talk about like the status of the war? Like are they winning? Are they losing? Like, yeah, what? they will as they kind of go along. So like here's an example of that where like um, Barda is at home with the baby and she's going to an appointment um, to talk about her 
breastfeeding. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Miracle is there and he's like, yeah, so apparently this guy's telling me that like you made a deal with this like Dark Side, one of Dark Side's guys, Kanto, that you would fight him and then whoever won, they would like pull their army from the field. And she's like, oh, I forgot about that. <laughs> and he's like, do you want me to go to the appointment? And she's like, what do you know about my boobs? Uh and right. He, he's what like, okay. Could you do there? He's like, okay, fair enough. I'll, I'll fight him. And so it doesn't go well. And they have to retreat from that battlefield. Oh, he's like, no, geez. it's cool. We'll just go around in the fall. Hmm. And so, like, this is going on for right, months. Right. right? And um, so we see Funky becoming more of like a caregiver, essentially. Right. And that, like, Mr. Miracle's idea of like trying to get his kid to crawl is like, no, he's supposed to have tummy time. But like, the kid's like freaking out about it. And like, Funky mm -hmm. picks him up to like care for him. And like, Mr. Miracle goes, that's not how Granny did it. And you're no. like, okay, yeah. that's that indicator granny of like- just makes you tough it out. Right, but yeah. it's like, it's that indicator that like people are always afraid of if they didn't have a good childhood that like you'll become your parents. Right. And like it's Granny like, kind well, of is. I only, this is the only way I know how to raise kids. Exactly. He had a Superman blue uh -huh. shirt on. Yeah. Which you're like, what? What? But it's red here. Yeah, because it glitches. Yeah. Right? There was a there was a Watchmen shirt before too. You could barely tell. It was just like the outlines of a smiley face. Oh now it's booster gold. <laughs> yes. Oh yeah, and the yeah, blue beetle yeah. on the next one. Exactly. But you can see that Jacob's growing up. It's like I'm, I'm I'm running out of superheroes. Uh <laughs> Right? So Fire and Ice next, I guess. <laughs> no, he's got more. <laughs> he's got more. Um so anyway, like the war is, like, not going great necessarily, right? Mm. Kids growing up. We see him fighting more and more. Um, we see that, like, Jacob's taking his first steps. Bart is not there. They're using, like, the mother box to, like, like record it. Funky's mm -hmm. bad at it. And he's just like, mm. I don't know if Bart can see. He's she's like, show me it. God yeah. damn it. <laughs> so, like, you know, he does it. And then, like, Mr. Miracle is, like, he will sing, like, Hush Little Baby to Jacob. And, um... He's singing it, and as he's singing it, like, you know, he's actually having a conversation with Barda as he's wandering through this battlefield, or, like, he's surrounded by, like, his fallen brothers. Mm -hmm. And, like, he's saying, like, his first words, which seemingly are Dada. Like, you know, like, he's, she's like, Funky, show him the picture, and then, like, he'll say that. And he's just, like, he's just such a broken man right now. Mm -hmm. Like, he's just so, like, this isn't what anybody wants, yeah. right? Aquaman. Oh, there's a this this omega symbol. Is that the dark side? Yeah, it's, symbol? The, it's the flag of, yeah. of apocalypse. So sure. it looks like they're doing okay. I mean, it looks like he's taken dark side yeah. sigil here. We assume, but uh, it's like going back and forth. But it looks like it's maybe like a grinding. It, the seemingly the, what we'll end up finding out is that like they can't support this. Like mm. they can't continue with this. Right. Like at this speed. Right. Like inevitably. You have to bring the bug people out of reserve, sir. <laughs> no. no! <laughs> They've already sacrificed so much. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Um, so it, it seems like maybe they're trying to, so the premise of the war, the background of the war, I guess, is Darkseid has the anti-life equation, so they're trying to get yeah, to they're him trying to, to take it away. Yeah, and like that's the point. They're like, okay, so we're fighting this war because we have to fight this war, but inevitably they'll have more troops than we do, and he still has the anti-life equation, so like it's kind of a losing battle, right. and yet they fight. Right. Um, so now we cut to, like, they're actually trying to make peace. Mm. They're like they're at this part of the war. Seemingly, what happens is like it's like war season. It's like this happens every once in a while. It's like right. we have peace for a bit, and now hey, it's time for a good old fashioned war. Let's right. have one. Right. Okay. And now it's time for peace. We cut to we're on Apocalypse. Calabac is there. Um, he is the first son of Apocalypse, but like or of Dark Side, but he's not really anybody's favorite. Mm. Um, yeah, he's is a he jerk. the first or is he the third? I can't remember. But like Dark Side kind of just like. But then, like, after Mr. Miracle doesn't really pan out the way he wants, he's just like, fine, whatever, I guess. Mm. I know, you suck. <laughs> um, so basically, they're trying to make peace. And, like, they go back and forth a whole lot. And there's, like, you know, like, the first day is a lot of, like, quips here and there. Um, he has to go to the bathroom, so Kanto's going to take him. And, like, Kanto's the guy who kicked his ass. Mm. And so then, like, they go to where the restroom is. And the restroom is essentially a giant hole, like, in 300. <laughs> or you just pee into. Yeah. And Kanto tells him a story about how he's like, one time I went back to the Italian Renaissance. What happens if you have to poop? I'm not leaning my butt over that. Well, listen, you gotta just take your chances, man. <laughs> There's something to hold on to, right? Like a rope or... Nah. Nah. Just hold it in. Nope. <laughs> I mean, if you want, you could, like, sit near the edge and then, like, push it off. There you go. That's on you if you want to do it That's that way. That's your choice. I'll hold it, thanks. Bring, bring a napkin. <laughs> he tells him how he went to the Italian Renaissance at one point on Earth. 
Uh-huh. And he like bombed in and like I just he showed up at the Renaissance. I just what so up? like what's happening? Luckily, I fit in because of my clothing. My clothes. <laughs> <laughs> and I never changed. Ta da! <laughs> and he like tells him this story about how like he actually had a thing with Leonardo da Vinci, and at the time da Vinci had a boyfriend, but that like you know it was complicated. But like you know we had this whole little fling and it was like wonderful. And like he started to like cry at one point, and then like he like told him this story about this master and apprentice painter and that like they like challenged like the apprentice challenged the master to like a paint off basically they took the whole year <laughs> <laughs> and they paint- it's a paint off it's a paint off <laughs> and the winner like, gets the other one's easel yeah or, or whatever or it just gets the prestige of having painted well right. loser has to cut off their ear haha uh-huh. picasso <laughs> wrong time it was way later <laughs> Not accurate. At All least right. I got the artist right. Uh, no, that was Van Gogh. Yeah. Damn it! <laughs> you did know the name of high five. a painter. <sighs> high, f- high five, like from high five? Uh. Basically, the story is that like the apprentice goes off for a year. The master goes off for a year. They both paint paintings. They both put them under curtains. They have this like kind of salon where like they're meant to decide who is going to have painted the best painting. The apprentice goes first. He reveals this painting, and it's like a plate full of like maybe six grapes. And they're like kind of like... Uh, you took a whole year and you painted six grapes, and he's just like, "Yeah, let's well, a grape every two months. It's pretty good." Check it out. Yeah, and but like, they look delicious, <laughs> right? Right. And then he waits for a minute, and there are these birds nearby, and the birds start flying for the the painting, and they start pecking at it because it's so well done. It looks they think so real. real, yeah. And he's like, they're like, "Whoa, whoa, <laughs> oh, <laughs> mind blown!" Right? Like, and like the the master's sitting over there, and like the apprentice is like, "I mean, like you might as well show them yours." I mean, like kind of from formality's sake, because like I've already won. Mm-hmm. He's like, "What are you talking about? I painted those birds that flew in." Right? No, he goes, <laughs> he goes, "Go ahead, pull back your curtain." And the master goes, "What curtain?" Oh. And so he's just like. <laughs> nice brush, he, brush drop brush yeah. drop i thought it was gonna be like the master like walks in from the side right? and no. it was no him it's just, it's just what painted. curtain right but it's that questioning of reality even that's again. egotistical he painted himself yeah by the way calabac has glasses they established that here i guess oh it's just funny cool only for reading um so like it's just, literally this whole sequence is just them dealing with what they like what calendar they're going to use, what like what they're going to give up, who's going to give up this, blah, 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 blah. Right. right? It's just tense moments. Um, we discover that Barda has gotten some bone wine. So <laughs> she's drinking it. and like Bone he, wine? Bone wine. Like made from bones? Why would you think that? Uh, just... I just, I don't just know. Just it's wine dark. you drink after boning. Um, excuse me. It's, oh. it's fermented bone marrow. Oh. For, of captured gods. Gross. Like captured new gods. Wow. She's like, Granny taught me how to make it. Ugh. Like, all the Furies knew how to make it, and we would make it, and then, like, we'd have to bring it, like, a whole bunch of it up to the Hell Castle, where Darkseid was. We'd drink most of it on the way, and then you'd get <laughs> real mad. And you're like... Ah, good uh, times. <laughs> drink it on the way to Hell Castle, you know? Exactly. Um, we have this moment where we see Mr. Miracle, like, be a leader, where, like, they agree to these terms, and then, like... Mr. Miracle is like, yeah, but you're ignoring this one thing that, like, if we agree to these terms had to happen. Like, if you agree to this, that was unsaid that we were going by this other thing. Mm. Right? And so, like, Calabac loses his mind. Under the table that they're sitting at, it's actually supported by new gods, essentially, that have been captured. They're prisoners. Like, uh. that's who's holding the table up. Oh. Calabac grabs one of them and throws them across the room. Jeez. Oh, come on. That could have been good bone wine. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Nah. Nah. So, like, but, like, he doesn't back down from that. Like, he's right. just, like, he's, like, I don't know if you know this, but, like, I'm not High Father. Like, I'm not, like, I'm, I'm not, like, Orion at all. And I'm not, like, some New Genesis toddler here. Like, I'm Granny raised from the X-Pits. So, like, this isn't going to work. Your little scare tactics mm. aren't going to work. And he's, like, okay, fine. Nah. And then we see the aftermath of that, which is, like, Scott, like, his whole body is shaking from that encounter. Wow. Because, like, he did that to get what he needed to get, but that's not him. Right. Right? Like, and, like, Bart is the, the you know, voice of reason where she's like, that guy was dead anyway. Mm. Like, there's no way he, he wasn't, he wasn't part of the prisoner exchange. He was done to be dead anyway. Mm. Yeah, once they don't need the table anymore. Well, that's it. Why would they agree to negotiations on a table that's held up by one of their captured countrymen? Because... <laughs> 
Because that's how it's done. It's like, yeah. look, we're not going to talk peace if we don't get we we need those guys holding up the table. Right. That's a deal breaker. I brought you this gift. A uh, couple lines of coke on a mirror. Yeah, it is a mirror, and it's Granny Goodness's mirror. He gives it to them because he's just like it's the mirror of goodness. You know, I thought that like I was thinking of you, and after you know we were talking about Granny the other day, and, and she isn't using it anymore, you know, because she's dead. Because you killed her. So I just thought you might like to have this. <laughs> And you're like, screw you, Cat. That, that's supposed Great. to be like making it, me feel bad. Yeah, it's a tactic. And oh. so, like, you you're, know, you're basically your mother's dead. Yeah, you, and, here's and you your killed shop. her. You Don't did forget. It. Yeah. So with the and you mirror, cut her head off. No, I didn't do that. Yes. <laughs> no, that was Bart. I didn't do that. <laughs> well, Bart bullied well, her head, and then yeah. Orion cut her. I, I honestly, I really had nothing to do with yeah, it. Yeah, I was at just all. there. I, I guess I didn't stop it. But yeah. I didn't know it was going to happen. Right. I mean, I knew it was going to happen. Yeah. But anyway. And I don't really care. I'm trying to escape this conversation. <laughs> How's it going? <laughs> so, um, they talk about the fact that it's like, Granny gave uh, Barda a lot of corrective surgery and like skin grafts and like laser removals of like whatever she'd done. Like whenever she would hurt them, she would then like build the back up. Uh, right? And that, Do like, they have scars? No. No, she wiped them all out. Yeah, okay. and, she, and like the idea was that like on the outside you're beautiful, but on the inside you're mine. Mm. That's fucked up. Yeah, and so like the mirror presumably showed you what you look like on the inside. Oh. And so like they use the mirror, he sets it up, it becomes a full length mirror, and we see what they look like on the inside. How they feel. Scarred and how they're damaged. broken. Yeah. They're wow. And you're like, oh, okay. We go back, by the way, to the the pissing hole, and like <laughs> Count was like, I made that up. That story about Da Vinci. He's like, why? And he's like, I mean, I'm sitting here peeing next to the high father. I feel like I gotta say something. And you're like, what? So I just made up a story for yeah. no reason. Yeah. Um, Weird. They go to the fire lakes and they take a dip in it. Well, Barta does. Ah, he's like, you're out of your mind. Full time sake. Yeah, just for fun. Yeah. So he's like, you know what? I kind of do love it now. Well, yeah, yeah, because like the point is like they. This is like day six, right? Okay. They're pr- they've come to an agreement. They're basically gonna be going in the next day or so. Day seven rolls around and Calabac's like. Father has rejected our offer. Ugh. You're the you were supposed to be his voice. You said you had his yeah. full approval on all of it, and he's like, yeah, 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 yeah. He's made an alternate proposal. Here's his proposal. So he will withdraw all his forces. Mm-hmm. One, right? That's what you he, want. He he will allow. He would further disarm by allowing New Genesis forces to come and inspect Apocalypse. You, In- okay, like, interesting. Just like the you you know what I mean? Like yeah, look for some and, WMDs. Yep. Yeah. And. He will surrender the anti-life equation. And they're like, what? what? You said that wasn't on the table. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it is now, apparently. And he only wants one thing in return. Of course. Mm. He's like, he wants Jacob free. Oh, whoa. And then we get like the best cover Nick Darrington did for this whole thing. I freaking adore this cover. Nick Darrington did all the covers for this. And like, I love this image. Like seeing that on the comic shelves, like I was like, I have a copy of this. It's just, I love this cover. He's forcing him to make a choice like similar to, to what his father, what his had, father to do. had to do. Exactly. Yeah. He's offering him even more. Yeah, really. he's, he's like, like, you could basically win the war. Yeah, you're going to win it all, but you have to give me this one thing I know you don't want to give me. Yeah. You don't want to give me that. So they go home, and then he goes out and drinks with uh, Booster Gold and Blue Beetle. Mm-hmm. Like, he's just like, hey guys, cool, whatever. You got like a time machine, can't you fix this? <laughs> and they're like, nah. Okay, I really enjoy his flannel shirt that is still a Mr. Miracle shirt. Yeah, he's just like, whatever. <laughs> so then he goes home and, like, basically they're... Bart is planning Jacob's party. He, he's almost one at this point. Mm-hmm. He's like, his one-year birthday is coming up. And she's like, so, like, here's the thing. I read a thing. We're supposed to have, like, a big party. It's not really for him. It's for us. It's a celebration of, like, we made it kind of thing. Mm-hmm. We kept him alive for a year! Exactly! <laughs> and he's just like, I'm thinking, like, maybe we should invite some of the Justice League people, but, like, not too much. And, like, maybe the Furies, because, like, I feel like they're going to be upset. And, like, we'll invite Funky, but, like, I don't want to think he's to work. Like, she's going down this whole thing as he's mm-hmm. in the shower, and he's like, we have to talk about yeah. this. And we see, I love this, like, like Scott, like, just collapses on the floor. As like her final thing is like you know we we we're alive he's alive and we've made it mm. and it's like oh <laughs> yeah but the, you haven't ended the war the yeah war still how you need to exactly yeah. oh, he's wearing a share of Babylon shirt is the book the Tom King wrote oh. <laughs> <laughs> like he, they're going so far as like Scott goes to pick up a cake a Batman cake right for it and like he's trying to figure out when to have the party. He's like, well, like, okay. So, like, she wants to have it on his birthday, but that would be, like, a day after. We've got this work thing. So, like, I don't, maybe we should have it the day before. I, I don't know. Because, like, <laughs> like, like, literally, they have not talked about this yeah. at all. 
And so, like, inevitably she's talking about, like, naps, and then, like, he tries to get her while they're in the living room after he's put her, like, she's put him down, like, Jacob. Yeah. He's like, we have to talk about this. We have to at least discuss it. And her idea of discussing it is she punches the Mr. Miracle poster that's behind them, <laughs> which is the first cover for the very first issue of Mr. Miracle ever printed back in the mm. 70s. And, like, she punches it, and then the baby cries, and she leaves. And then, like... His beard is getting really long. Yeah, yeah. it's time. Kind of like High Fathers. Yeah, and so then, like, he's on his way to the party store, and he's talking with some folk from New Genesis, and he basically wants to get, like, some stats where it's just like, okay, can we win this war? Mm -hmm. And they're like, no. Mm. Like, this is it. This is the option. Right. We can't win this otherwise. Right. If and he doesn't... Uh, if you don't do this, like, we're done. Yeah. So he goes to the party store and he has a really interesting conversation with the guy at the party store who's just like, hey, like, you know, he's like, do you have a membership award? He's like, can I ask you something? And he's like, oh, I'll tell you all about the membership award. And he like tells him the whole thing. He's like, no, 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 oh, no. God. Like, I'm in this, I'm, I'm, I've got this war and I'm losing and like billions are going to die. But like, if I win and I mean like really win it, I have to give them my son. And he's like, uh-huh. He's like, what do I do? And the guy's like, okay. Uh, um, so basically he tells him, he's do just- you, Do you want to sign up for a membership? <laughs> Come on, man. Do you want a membership or not? Please, just, just say it. I don't want to talk about your shit. I, I, I don't know. man, just watching. Uh, dude, dude, I don't know what I'm having for dinner. Like, I don't, can't help you. Chet here has, like, as an answer, and he tells me, he's like, okay, I guess, like, the whole point of life is to, like, find happiness, and, like, you want to have, like, to maximize that happiness for the most people. He's like, it's kind of like an equation, like a life equation. Get it? He's like... <laughs> He's like, you know, you kind of have to just... Chet, you are blowing my <laughs> mind! <laughs> <laughs> what? He's like, so basically you have to, like, put your decisions into the equation and whatever, and, like, you see what happens. If you increase the happiness for the most amount of people to end the war, go for it. But if that happiness doesn't equal... Is, is less than what you'll lose for your son... Like, you basically have to look at it. Like, right. is your happiness with your child more than the happiness of six billion people? Right. Or billions of people. So balance it out. Yeah. Yeah. And he's just like, anyway, <laughs> do you want to sign up for a membership <laughs> or something? He's like, no. No. What? Does no, Chet. ever? Do, do they? <laughs> we see Mr. Miracle get into a mine that has all these swords, and they, they go in, and he says, like, God damn it. Like, as though Mr. Miracle attempted again mm. to kill himself. Right. Because, like, better to die than have to make this choice. Right. Like, he knew that it wasn't going to kill him. Yeah. Like, maybe this time, yeah, maybe Mr. Miracle won't on. survive the trap. Yeah. Thing. I like no, the idea that <laughs> he's saying, God damn it. But at the same time, like, then you're just leaving Big Bardo with that choice. Man. Well, yeah. well, you yeah. know what choice she's going to make. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's, she's, she doesn't care. She's not from it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> she doesn't have a pot glove. She's fine. So anyway, they finally have the conversation. Mm. They go to the playground. And, like, he's like, listen, like... We were both raised on apocalypse, and like we turned out okay. We turned out fine, like, right? Look at us, right? You know, like she's like, yeah, and look at the rest of the Furies, <laughs> right? Are look they happily married? <laughs> <laughs> she's like, no, we're not. No, we're not fine. Right. Like, you know, he's like, well, remember no, the mirror, right? <laughs> well, she's like, he's like, well, I don't, I don't mean like then, but like now, now we're good. She's like, oh, is that why I found you bleeding out by the toilet? Because we're fine. <laughs> So it just all point. pours out. Like the yeah. whole thing is just like, frump, here it is. And he's like, that's, I'm, I'm trying, that's not fair. And she's like, oh, that's good for you. That's really great for you. Like, you know, the whole thing was like, I've been taking care of you. I have not dealt with this yet. You yeah. and I have not dealt with this. Like, you were going to leave me here to deal with all of this on my own. Like, like I don't understand. When do I get to escape, Scott? Uh. And he's like, but, but that's not your power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, essentially, she's like, I made life work. While you didn't, uh. that's not fair, right? Like, she's like, I, like, what exactly were you trying to leave? Was it me? And he's like, whoa, no. Because it's like, she's like, Cause seemingly that's what you were trying to get away from was all of this, and that's including me, uh -huh. right? Like, I, I don't understand. Like, did you ever think for a second, like, what would happen? She's upset. She's not gonna give him the kid. Right. They set up for the party. Funky's there. It's really weird what we see here. There's also like an inconsistency within the art and I can't tell if it's intentional or not because mm -hmm. the top of the sign says happy birthday and the middle says Jacob. But then we see the Jacob here yeah. on the top far. I, I think that's probably just a mistake. Mm. But you can't take anything. Yeah, yeah. This is where this book gets meta. We're okay. gonna really go briefly about it. So like Funky's like, hey, did I ever tell you that like the story that like, you know, like Jacob and I have been telling called the Star Reading God? And his helper, the Golden Retriever, 
who like helps him find stars to eat. <laughs> what? Galactus and Silver Surfer. Oh. And he's just like, Funky, this kid can't even say six words. Like, how? He's like, no, 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 you don't understand. He's the imagination. I write the words. Which is the relationship that he had, that yeah. Stan had with Kirby. Yeah. Kirby created all these like crazy things and Stan went in there and wrote like the, like what they're doing at the time. Like, right. oh, I'm going to punch you. Right. <laughs> as I'm doing it. <laughs> and so we see a little bit of that. <laughs> and like that story and it's it's Galactus, right? And how like in this world though, Batman shows up and uses the laminated laser to defeat him. <laughs> and yay, they win, yeah. right? And he's just like, cool. So wait, is the point of this that I have to get the kid a dog? Like what what, what is the- Yeah, like, what are you what? trying to say? And he's just like, no, no, it's like the meaning of life. And then he asks <laughs> like, what do you mean? And Funky just yells, Excelsior. <laughs> yay. <laughs> And he's just like, Will okay. you make sense for like five he's minutes? He's like, okay, okay. I am so high right now. He's like, that's not anything what you just said. And he's just like, yeah, but it's not my story. It's Jacob's story. And isn't that something special? And I'm like, oh, that's really nice. Mm -hmm. Like, that's just very sweet. So then Barda and Mr. Miracle kind of make up a little bit. And he's like, so, okay, so here's what we're going to do. Um, I am going to bring Jacob to Apocalypse. And then I'm, when I go to give him to Darkseid, I'm just going to kill Darkseid. That's just what I'm going to do. Gonna You're going to kill Darkseid. This is my plan. Okay. This is the plan I have. The plan is I will just kill him. It's, I mean, like, I probably won't, but this is my plan. Right. I'm sure as hell going to try. That's all I got. And is like, cool, I'll come too. <laughs> that's all she wanted. Mm. Like, she's like, nope, that's it. So then they have sex again. <laughs> <laughs> We're what making us another baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's, well, she's like, hey, you said the right thing. Yeah. <laughs> sex time. <laughs> Um, so they bring another vegetable platter, they pack diapers, she gets her, her mother box, they go, <laughs> they put the, the, the platter down, and Darkseid has a carrot. Yay. Apparently the carrots are everyone's favorite. Cat but aren't they? I like the yep. celery. I, yeah, yeah no, but is it the first you go for? Do you really like the celery, or do you just feel like you should eat it, because it's there? It's really okay, just it's not the first I go no, for. No, it's not yeah. the no, first you go not. for. It looks like it's cauliflower, broccoli, celery, and baby carrots. See, dark I also side. like the broccoli, but like, why would you put cauliflower in there? I why like would the you cauliflower. put broccoli in there? I like the cauliflower. I don't like broccoli. Yeah, you don't. I like that dark side is like, look, I'm a like world destroying monster, but I'm also like a head of state and a diplomat. Yeah. And you know, you bring food to the parlay, I'm gonna have oh, some yeah, of I'm it. I'm not you know. saying no to a baby carrot. Yeah. We don't have those here. <laughs> Because no babies are born on Apocalypse. Yes. When we want baby carrots, we rip it from the gut of the milk and the adult carrot. I mean, technically baby carrots are them. shaved down. Carrots. So I guess they could come from Apocalypse. They're cut from the... Oh, the, yeah. The, yeah. So he's very comfortable with these. Yeah. Ah, an Apocalypse carrot. So here's what I think is cool real quick. Let's just talk about this real quick as like a side note of like, we've been looking at this nine panel grid. Yeah. I adore this because it forces, like, we've got our nine panels, but Darkseid breaks three of them because he's so large. He's a larger than life character. Yeah, and I really love that, panels. how imposing he looks compared to their image, which is also a single image cut up, but they fit into the single frame. Right. And I just love that. It's, that's such a nice touch. They're meant to be checked for um, weapons. They are, they show up. And like, he's just like, hey, we're here to give the piece over, the kid over for peace. Desaad is there and he's just like, you're lying. And he's just like, oh no, you're right. I'm totally gonna kill the infinite God and like my fake dad with like my crazy <laughs> escape powers. I'll escape him to death. <laughs> and like Desaad's like, you're being sarcastic. Like, I, I see what you're doing. Get back out of no! <laughs> So then, like, Jacob's just kind of wandering around the throne room of, like, <laughs> Apocalypse or of uh, Dark Side. Yay. And then, like, it's time. And so, like, she picks up the baby and she gives him to Dark Side and, like, she's sad. And then, like, um, he grabs Dark Side's nose. He <laughs> says what he says for nose. They have an argument about whether or not it's the word for that or not. And then, like. And then uh, Dark Side refuses to take the baby because it's like, there's a Batman symbol shirt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a fan. No. Mm mm. That Superman. guy's a jerk. Uh, if it was Superman, I think he'd have a real problem. Yeah. So anyway, so Darkseid can't really unlearn the anti-life equation for it is knowledge. You can't unlearn knowledge. How right. deep. Fooled you. But he's like, but what he can do is prevent himself from using the Omega Beams, which is kind of the key to executing the anti-life equation. And so he plucks his eye from his own head and he hands it to them. 
But just one of them. Well, yeah. I mean, can't he like, use it? No, he, he needs both. He needs both. You need, you need both for the Omega Without beam? Without both eyes, I can't operate the anti life yeah, equation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not really an Omega Beam. It's just kind of like... It's like Omega Ray. Yeah, it's like a little laser. It's more like it, it entertains it's cats. It's not oh, really effective. Okay. <laughs> It's just, you know. Uh, is that a thing, or did Tom King just make that up? Listen, you don't know. <laughs> what do you know? I guess nobody knows how it works. It works however the writer wants whatever. it to work. He needs his, like, his eyeballs to okay. do whatever. So Barta takes it and squishes it immediately. Oh. She's not even like playing with this. Yeah. Like, forget it. Sweet. So then like Scott's like, okay, well, I guess the only thing left to do is say goodbye to my son. Mm. And so he goes up to him, and like it's actually very poignant. And, like, even though we know as the reader that he's not going to do this, right. he says something that is, like, so what he would have said had he actually done it, mm. where he's just like, I don't remember what my father said to me. And, like, even if I did, I probably would hate those words. And so, like, I don't want you to remember this. But, like, when I was in the X pits, I always felt like out there somewhere loved, someone loved me. And, like, that's what I want you to remember is that somewhere out there someone loves you. And that's all I want you to remember. And he's like, I love you so much. And he's like, okay, honey, I got him. And he rolls out of the way, and Barta takes the baby carriage, pops it up, and just <laughs> shoots Darkseid <laughs> with this laser. Nice. And she's like, hey, Darkseid, we have been looking for all sorts of crazy escape traps for, like, my husband to escape from. <laughs> and we found this, which is actually, like, a gun powered by the energy that was taken from the Miracle Machine, which was used in one of the crises. Mm. And, like, we never got it to quite work. It's unstoppable. And we couldn't use it against Mr. Miracle, but we're going to use it against you. And she just blasts him with it until eventually he does stop it. Mm. And then he goes and he, like, knocks her down uh, immediately. It's like, no. Nope. And so then, like, Desaad's like, hey, okay, cool. You violated the agreement. Yeah, Neat. Nice All right. Try. So anyway, we're going to redeploy our troops, and now we're still going to take the baby. And then, like, Darkseid just lays into Mr. Miracle and starts, like, beating the hell out of him, as you would expect to happen, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And, like, he's laying on the floor. He's battered and beaten. She's laying on the floor, battered and beaten. The baby's there. Darkseid's coming up to the baby. And, like, Barta just says, stand. And Mr. Miracle goes, standing. And he gets up, and he reaches into the veggie platter, and he pulls out a knife. Mm. And he just yells, fuck you. <laughs> and he drives it into Darkseid's eye socket. And he just keeps yelling that over and over and over again as he's pushing it into his brain. And then Darkseid collapses. And he's just like, hey, dad. <laughs> like, like, you know, I bet you didn't think that was going to happen. But like, yeah, hey, that's a Farron knife. It's made from like one of your own flesh. I bet you're wondering where I got that, right, dad? He's like, well, guess what? You killed Orion. And he's of your own flesh. And I just happen to know a lady who knows how to make blood marrow wine. And so she knew how to forge his bones into a weapon. And I made it. Because you know what, Dad? You always marry up. <laughs> he's just <Nice>. so mad. <laughs> and it's awesome. Right? And he's just like, well, there you go. Like, I did it. Where'd Desaad go? Did he, like, run away? And he's still there. Oh, okay. So then, like, Bart is like, hey... I thought you were, like, you just said a whole lot in front of Jake. <laughs> like, you just cursed. I thought your line was going to be, escape this. We agreed <laughs> on escape this. <laughs> That's your thing. You escape. Yeah. And he's just like, I don't know. It's the spur of the moment. No, I escape. He doesn't escape. It wouldn't make any sense <laughs> if I told him to escape. Yeah. Barta, that's dumb. I'm sorry. Barta, I'm sorry, honey. I didn't mean to say that. that. I wasn't going to say that because it doesn't make any sense. Right? So then, like, eventually they presume that, like, his first word's going to be a curse word. <laughs> and then Desaad goes, cool, you did it. And he <laughs> takes off his his cloak, and it's Metron. What? And they're like, what? And Barda <laughs> clearly sees him. What? And then, like, he's like, neat. You dared the, the, the trap of death, and you escaped. And now it's time to look onto the face of God. And we see this. Cool. What we see is continuity. <laughs> Yeah, and all the all the all the heroes. Presumably, it's the current continuity. Yeah. So you've got like um, Damien and oh, yeah. Superboy, John Kent. We see Booster Gold. We see Adam Strange, which is important because that's the next series that he does, nah. <laughs> um, and that he's doing right now in the midst of everything that's happening. Yeah. Um, we see a lot happening here, right? We see Orion. We see Barda. We see two different flashes. We see another flash with his face blurred. Mm. We don't see Mr. Miracle. Interesting. And Metron says, there's another world. And, like, basically, it's like, Scott Free, you're not where you're supposed to be. Oh. 
And then we get this kind of cool set of panels here where like these are people in the industry. This is Nick Darrington. Um, this is Dan DiDio and Jim Lee. So it's kind mm. of a fun little who's who that they threw in there watching the show of Mr. Miracle. You're like, what is happening? <laughs> we see Mr. Miracle shaving his beard and someone's talking to him being just like, oh, like that's where you put it. That's where you put the mirror. Like, you know, all the death and torture and pain, all that for you. And you put it in the condo of like your bathroom in LA. And he's just like, I'll move it. It's fine. And the person's like, you know, no, no, it's fine. You do whatever you want. Like it was all for you, my little boy, whatever. Mm -hmm. And he's talking to Granny Goodness. Oh. And you're like, what? And she says the whole thing, like, you know, like, oh, like, how could you do this to me, my boy? How could you do all this just to escape from me? You know, like, you had your chance. Metron was the signal. You're supposed to go back. How could you leave your granny? You're like, okay. So um, basically, they, like, Mr. Miracle and Bart are preparing to go back to the real world. No, to Apocalypse. Oh, because, to, like, the uh, war is still, like, it's back on. Oh. <laughs> the war is back on. It's back on. Um, Funky's gonna come by and take care of the kid. Um, she finally, Bardo finally fights Kanto and like, n like knocks him out immediately, basically, or they start to fight. But like, she gets a good first punch in. <laughs> um, as Scott's sitting there hanging out, drinking some some blood wine <laughs> or some bone wine, bone wine, some marrow wine. <laughs> um, he's talking to Forager. Okay. Right. Who who, was... who is just like you're in hell. Mm. You you killed yourself because you wanted to die, and now you're in hell, and you'll just keep living this over and over and over again. Oh. And, like, it doesn't get better. I'm sorry. So then we cut to them at the doctor's again. And, like, uh, Bart is pregnant again. And um, they're trying to find the heartbeat. They can't find the heartbeat. They find it. They ask, like, the doctor, like, oh, do you want to know what the sex is? She's like, yes, it's a girl. Bart is elated. Mm. And then Orion's there. And he's just like, you, you're in heaven. <laughs> Interesting. And he's just like, you killed yourself and you went to paradise. And you decided to stay. But, like, I'm disappointed in you because, like, this is bullshit and you might as well be dead. <laughs> and it's like, okay. So then, like, they're, like, talking about how they're going to have to move probably. Because even though she loves her condo, the fact is, like... They, two kids? They can't raise two kids in a condo. Yeah. Like, he's like, it doesn't matter how many rooms we move around at this point. Like, right, that's it. Right, there's no space. Exactly. You're going to have to be those people. And you got rid of our big kitchen. Yeah, yeah. so thanks. How are we supposed to cook for two kids? <laughs> so then we see Funky and Jacob playing with toys that are... The new gods, mm -hmm. right? And like, there's like Forger and like what looks like maybe Oberon there. <laughs> and then we see that Darkseid is sitting on the couch. <laughs> and interestingly enough, Jacob says Dasa, and then says Dasa As. Like Darkseid is. Oh. So it's like, can Jake see him? Right. Right. We see that boy from the beginning again. Like, saying that, like, you know, talking about the fourth world and what that is. And that, like, you know, kind of giving a lay down of, like, the first world was what lives in the old world, where my parents are from. Second world was the new world. The third world is, like, where I'm from. And then the fourth world is uh, my child is, uh, is my world, the world I see when I close my eyes. And then the kid responds with, and try to escape. And you're like... Hmm. Then he runs into High Father, who is just, like, you know... No, what happened was you faced the anti-life equation and it affected your world. And like much like I faced it, but you weren't as strong as I was. And so like that's what happened. Like you failed, but that's okay. There's no shame in that. You're like you're still my son and I'm proud of you. And then he punches him. <laughs> like Scott just punches High Father. He's like, nope, I reject this. He's like, screw this, you. It's like, this no. sounds like bullshit. Like, no. And like he's just screaming at him. He's like, do you know what I did for you? And I think it's like not only that it's bullshit, but he's just he's just mad at him. He's just like, yeah. no, no, you're a piece of crap. You gave me up. Yeah. Yeah. I like I was in the same situation. I didn't give my son up. Right. I killed him, and you couldn't do it. So screw you. You're a dick. And then he talks with Oberon. He gets upset, and he's just like, I don't know. He's like, I think I did it all wrong. Like I I, I shouldn't have escaped. I should have escaped. I don't, I don't know. Like what? Like I I screwed up, Oberon. And he's like, no, no, it's cool. It's cool. He's like, it's all right. And he explains that, like, the other world that Metron showed you with all those crises and continuity <laughs> don't really make any sense. <laughs> and that world is full of, like, superheroes who always end up totally fine. He's like, you think that's somehow real, like, more real than what you have here with your wife and those kids? Mm. Like, seriously? That's more real? And then, like, essentially, like, he, like, they talk about the baby and how, like, the baby, like, you know, is coming and, like, how that's great and stuff like that. And then, like, he says, kid... 
this, all this, it'll break your heart and you can't escape that. And that's what Jack Kirby said about comics. Mm. He said, comics will break your heart. So I'm like, that's very sweet. Yeah. Because Kirby wasn't a fan of continuity. Ah. Uh, he didn't like continuity. Okay. He wanted continuity to ruins tell things. stories yeah. unfettered. He didn't want to have to worry about like what the like what Superman was doing and how it would affect the new gods. Right. Or like what like Spider Man was doing, how that was gonna affect what he was telling. Right. He just wanted to tell his stories. So he doesn't like it. Right. And Tom King's a big fan of Kirby. Right. Well, and he told this story without they're on Earth all the time, but they don't get the heroes involved. They don't right, call except Superman. for Blue Beetle and except Booster Gold to show true, up. That's true. They do show up, but like, there's no question of like, well, why doesn't Superman like help him solve the problem? It's like, well, maybe Superman's not there. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, I only put heroes in there who really wouldn't be able to do anything right? to help. Yeah, just so we could. But like, talk he to does him. mention Clark at the beginning. Yeah, so, so like they exist. Probably because they're, not worried they're about new it. god problems. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> These are new god problems. Interesting. So then this like How very inhuman of you. <laughs> You can't say that. <laughs> That's over there. <laughs> That's over there. Shut he up. Shut up. They already did that over there. Um, so then he and like Bart just have like a seemingly normal conversation about how the remote actually only got like washed in the dishwasher, <laughs> um, and that like like he just looks at her. And by the way, the poster's different in the background. It's a different poster now. Mm. Could be because she broke it. It right. could be because something has changed. Um, and says like you know she's like what's wrong with you? Like she says dark side is. And he's like yeah, but so are we. And then he like he's like I can always escape, and she goes, "Can you?" And then to the end. Hmm. Interesting. And so, according to Tom King, without like he doesn't want he won't spoil anything that happens at the end mm -hmm. as to like what has happened right. to him. There is an answer, but he would prefer it if we all decided what we thought happened. Okay. He would prefer if it was left up to interpretation because he feels like it's it would be taking away the experience of the reader to tell them. Okay. Also, the glitches, he says there's a reason for that. But he's not telling us either. I like, he's not going to tell you. Okay. It's entirely up to your interpretation to what this means. Because, like, I this time around through when I reread this, knowing that Tom King was a big fan of Jack Kirby and felt like a kinship to him, because mm -hmm. Jack Kirby also fought in World War II. Mm hmm. Um, Stan, I think, was also drafted, but, like, <clears throat> Jack ended up in a situation where someone found out that he was a cartoonist, and so he got the job, apparently, of, like, being sent ahead to draw maps, which is an incredibly dangerous position to oh, be in. Oh, interesting. And so, like, he's been through the shit. He was Jewish. He comes back from that. He draws comics. Everybody's copying him. Rights are taken away. He's told he can't do this. Stan Lee, well, you know what I mean? Like, this guy, you know, was an incredible innovator, created the Kirby Crackle, created, like, like so many, like, looks of, of like, characters that we know and love today, um, was overshadowed at times by Stan Lee and his boisterousness. Mm -hmm. And this guy just wanted to create these kinds of stories, these these stories about these, these new gods, these beings, these cosmic beings without this continuity. Yeah. And so, like, I feel like this read-through, knowing that, that, like, those glitches are alterations in continuity. So, like, the baby did die. Mm. And maybe Mr. Miracle actually killed Orion. Mm -hmm. Like, because right. it glitches before he comes in. Right. Like, as he comes in. And so, like, that could be he, like, changed it. He's just like, oh, no, Darkseid killed him. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it, there's, like, an endless, like, yeah, number like, of things that, like, could be, like... And maybe it's not that he's doing it. But something is. Something is. Yeah. Maybe it is that he did die, and this is the afterlife where you can do that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Interesting. It's a possibility that the glitch is like, if this is the afterlife and he keeps ri like going through it, he is trying to change it all the time. Right. Every single time he goes through it again and again and again. Oh yeah, maybe he's been like perfecting it and every glitch is like a place where he like made a different yeah. decision. Yeah, exactly. So like, hmm. there's a lot that you can take out of this in question with just that. Then when you drill down deeper, there's the like question of these two individuals who have come together through this like tormented like upbringing mm -hmm. and how they make things work and like how they make their relationship work and like kind of watching that develop and so like there's that element there's this actual political element of like this kind of bullshit like war yeah you know yeah. what i mean that always has to happen kind of thing yeah it's definitely like commenting on on the nature of war and the people yeah. who have to go through it exactly um. exactly and so like 
while Tom King is often accused of writing about individuals who have suffered through PTSD and um, maybe to a point where it's like it's it's like that's what he's just kind of known for at this yeah. point. This book is him doing it the best way I think he could have ever done it. Right. Be well, it makes total sense with his character. That's exactly it. Yeah. Like this book. Again, you don't really need to know anything about the New Gods to walk into this. Yeah. And you don't have to really know anything about Tom King or Jack Kirby to enjoy this book. But when you do and you reread it, you get something out of it a second time. Yeah, that's And cool. like, if I read this again, I bet I'm going to come out with something else with it again. Because it's like, each read through, completely different. The first read through was in floppies. And so mm. legitimately what I thought had happened was I thought that him killing himself was the end of the book. Right, yeah. And that the baby had died or he had given the baby to Apocalypse. And mm. so then he killed himself. And you were just going to like get there. Yep. Right. And I'm kind of glad that didn't happen because like this is more interesting and it's a way better read like this. Mm -hmm. Way better read like this. The floppies, while well, great, and I'm so glad I have them because those covers are spectacular, it was so hard to keep track of yeah. the nuances that had happened in previous issues. Yeah. The art is fantastic. There's so much that you can see in, like, Jared's art. I mean, like, there are things I caught this time around, like just these random little ways that he renders certain things. Hi, or Hi Father Orion at times looks monstrous in the way he's yeah. depicted. Yeah, he's got like all this like crap all over Exactly, yeah. and being like the son of dark side, it's like, is that real? Right. Is that what Mr. Miracle sees? Yeah, any well, given any given panel, you'd be like, is that really happening? Yeah. With the nature of how the, the story unfolds and the art. Yeah, it's just. Makes you question everything. It could literally does, but like, you can just read this through as it is, where it's just like, okay, cool, like, you know, he's just living in another continuity, or maybe he's not, or whatever. Like, yeah. what was, like, is Metron we real? I don't right. know. Granny seems to be, like, familiar with him. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Also, Granny is more loving in this, and is, does that indicate that, like, it's Scott's influence? Because he's like, I do have some weird, fond memories of her. Mm. Even though she was my abuser, like, either I'm like putting this on to her that like maybe she did love me right. and so like she's gentle with him well she's gentle with him here yes like right. she's no longer raising him it's understandable that she might be different with him right yeah, she would be like no i was hard on you when you were a kid because yeah. that's what like my idea of like how to that's raise what kids forges is. but you. now you're right. through that and i don't you know right. look at the person like you that. became exactly like that. but he also does go back and mention like him, her like saying like i love you and like whether yeah. he believes it or not you know or like you know telling him that story you know what i mean like yeah. it's 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 interesting and again knowing that like king has said i'm not saying i like i don't really know his background but he did just say that he he said that he didn't have the best childhood. So mm -hmm. I don't know what that means, and I'm not going to try to extrapolate anything from that. He had to swim in a lake of fire. Yeah, that's rough, man. <laughs> Where do you even find that? Well, hell. <laughs> I guess a volcano? I guess. That's I don't like, think you'd make like, it out of there. No. Nah. I don't think you can do that. I, 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 don't, I don't think you can, yeah, no. No. I, I don't think that's what happened. <laughs> Sorry. I'm more than likely, you probably read, already read this. It, or, <laughs> I, I'm gonna guess. But if you haven't, you're on the fence about it, because maybe you were reading Batman, and maybe you weren't a fan of what happened there. Or maybe you just thought, like, I don't really care about Mr. Miracle. Right. Trust me. This book is great, and you're probably going to get something out of it. I don't know what it is, because it's so interpretational. Yeah. It's entirely up to you. So I highly recommend the read of this. It's a really cool superhero story that it involves superheroes, but at the same time, it's very human. Yeah. Yeah, and they're not. That's what's amazing. These two individuals are so human. Yeah. But they're not. But, like... They have been through the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. A, a, a kind of different, like, fire lake level of like, yeah. shit. Yeah. <laughs> X pit level of shit. Like, yeah. a lot of us have been through the shit, I'm, I'm, I'm sure. And so, like, there's something relatable here, even if it's, like, maybe not to that skin fling degree. Right, right. But it's there. There's yeah. a connection. But it's, it's not just that it happens, but they actually talk about it. They talk about and it. What it did to them which right. you don't necessarily get as much in in comics no you know where it's like yeah batman's parents were killed but it's like almost an abstraction yeah like he talks about it all the time or the books depict it all the time but yeah. he doesn't talk about it that much you can see he's haunted by it but mm -hmm. it's it's not like a thing that he's like living through with somebody else yeah. this this book is like way. really messing with my head i told you i told you uh. so I, I agree batman's like tragedy has become more of a myth and this yes. is more like 
Yeah, because real. I haven't heard it a thousand times. Yeah, you can engage with it like yeah. a little bit. Yeah, and also the way they have those conversations. We've seen, I, I've done that. I've seen people do that kind of thing where it's like you deflect or you mm -hmm. use humor because it's just like, you, like that's your coping mechanism. That's yeah. what you're going to do. So like really like this. If you've already read it, go grab it again and read it again. I didn't do it justice. I can tell you that right now. I didn't do it justice. So go get it. It's down there. It's in this general, just get past the lake of fire. <laughs> All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. Again, check the description box down below for not only where you can get this, but all kinds of other cool things. It's, it's great. It's, it's really neat down there. I'm going to go down there right now. Well, I'm going to sign off first. So. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> See you guys next time. I'm Tiffany. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Bye, guys. Bye. Dark side is. Dark side. But is. That, what is the dark side is for? So, there's no answer. What does that mean? So presumably dark side is used as a way to, like, that is, like, his own subconscious like reminding him of how crappy life is and it's usually said at a poignant mo moment where like he's at his lowest mm. like like apparently tom king didn't really get the whole dark side is and like someone else kind of explained it to him like that like you know like have you ever like woken up in the middle of the night like this was the example that was given to him like you ever woken up in the middle of the night and you felt like it's all coming to an end and what's the point of anything and like it's like that's dark side is mm, okay like it's this those dark reaches of your mind. Yeah. It's those dark, terrible places that your brain will go sometimes. Yeah. Dark side is. It also happens sometimes when you're at your highest points too. Mm. When your brain yeah. just kind of kicks in and you're yeah. like, yeah, don't, like don't, don't forget, this. everything sucks. Hey, you suck. Yeah. You're the worst. Yeah. Thanks, brain. Yeah, it's kind of like uh, this horrible, evil thing. Like whatever you're doing, like don't forget. Yeah. Like dark, dark side, side is. Is it, there? It's right there. It doesn't matter. It yeah. doesn't matter, like if you get an A on that test, because hey, dark side is. Yeah. It's a this this book really answer. illustrates it well with the back and forth between the Earth and the like war torn uh -huh. thing. It's like, yeah. You kind of forget when you're reading these pages where uh -huh. they're just doing mundane things, but it's like, don't forget. Yeah. There is this horrible war happening. Yeah. And this is just a brief respite from it. They're gonna go back and have to deal with that. Yep. It's always out there. Yep. Exactly. I've been dreading this it's book. It's it making hot. my hands sweat. Oh, my hands are sweaty too. What are you afraid of? <laughs> for the one time, my hands are not sweaty. <laughs> which is a first for me. Yeah, like ever in your life? Yeah, my hands are like always sweaty. My hands sweat a lot. <laughs> yeah, my hands are always sweaty. Oh, okay. My hands sweat a lot. Especially like, under these I'll, lights. I'll Christ. put my hand down on the counter at work for like maybe a minute and a half and I lit, pick up my hand and there's like a it's moisture a imprint. Yeah. <laughs> it's been it's like a little cloud. Sopping wet all the time. <laughs> just a wet person. I'm like the definition of the word <laughs> moist. It's just generally <laughs> moist. This is 24 seven moist. If you whispered war moist in the mirror three times <laughs> I would appear. <laughs> Oh, God. Can you imagine, like, touching a door handle after Ben? Oh. <laughs> yeah, Ethan has to all the time. It's a nightmare. It's a waking nightmare. Oh, my God. That would be a great horror movie. Like, The Moist Man. It's like... The Moist Man prophecies? <laughs> yeah. When you, you walk into your house and, like, the doorknob has, like, water on it. Like, oh, my God. The Moist Man's here. Oh, God. Why is this room so moist? <laughs> I think he's here. It's, it's a little heavy to breathe. The but water. it's nice at night when, you know, it's Drips. warm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Or like you feel like your shoulder feels moist. You turn around, yeah. there's nothing there. There's, nothing there's there. just two moist footprints there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that that has to be a thing. The moist man. The moist man. <laughs>